um, it, it's going to be it's going to be fascinating. I think it all we've discussed this so often. It'll all come down to first goal. Whoever scores that puts themselves in the box seat, as was proved last Monday against Blackburn. Yeah, fingers crossed, Sunderland can bounce back after Monday's uh, defeat to Blackburn. Nick Barnes and Gary Renner, thank you very much for now. We'll continue build up the Sunderland versus Bristol City very shortly on DAB Digital Radio and Freeview Channel 719. It's a big day, uh, non-league wise today. The International Stadium, Gateshead, are up against Macclesfield in the semi-finals of the FA Trophy for a place at Wembley. Colin White and Paul Dixon have, are on commentary duty this afternoon. It's available via the BBC Sport website. And Arp and Colin joins me now. A very big afternoon for the Heat Army. Good Colin. afternoon and a big afternoon, yeah. It certainly is. We'll run through the team in just a moment. But in terms of the size of this occasion, Gate said, we're, of course, at Wembley last season, reached the FA Trophy final last season. They've had a couple of league games postponed in recent times as well, which means that this is the, the first of four games in seven days, six games in 14 days. How are you doing, uh, To uh, round Welcome out the, the league already. season and Hope hopefully book well. a place uh, in the FA Trophy final, which would be their final game of the season on, know, on the 11th of May. Bearing in mind all those uh, games that they've got coming up in quick succession, they have made some changes. Rob Elliott has made a few changes today. So James Montgomery, who is now in his fourth spell at the club, returned from Spenny Moor, well, this is his second spell this season, really. Uh, he starts, so he started at Wembley in the trophy final last season. He starts here this afternoon in goal. Uh, Nathan Harness, who's been on loan from uh, MK Dons uh, and has played the last three games, not even in the squad because Eddie Beach, who's on loan from Chelsea and who's had glandular fever, which is why he's missed out for a good few weeks now, uh, is back and we're delighted to see him back in a matchday squad as well. The back three is Robbie Tinkler, Kenton Richardson and Joe Grayson, who also comes back from injury and he replaces uh, Louis Story. Story, one of only three in this squad uh, who started... Uh, in uh, the final at Wembley last season, there's only two of them. Uh, sorry, one of four, three uh, uh, in the starting eleven today. Uh, Greg Olley, the captain, is the other one. I'll come to him in a minute. But Tinkler, Richardson, and Grace in the back three, and then Jeez, the wing backs. Uh, there's Thanks a change the, there as well because Kane Adam is uh, one of those who is cup tied, so he's replaced by Ben Warman. Luke Hannant will be the wing back on the other side. Ed Francis and Callum Whelan in midfield alongside the returning Greg Olley, the captain who makes his first start uh, after four months out since the uh, the end of November. Really, he's actually not played a huge amount under Rob Elliott. He's in midfield, and then Tom Allen, who's still looking for his first goal for Gateshead. We thought he had it on the, the seventh goal uh, against Hartlepool when we were here on Tuesday night a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was then went down as an own goal in the end, but he is up there uh, alongside Dejon Brown, like all of which means it's a very, very strong bench for Gateshead. So Eddie Beach I've also mentioned as the goalkeeper. Louis yeah, Story as the defender, right but then Jack Stott, Regan Booty, Conor McBride, Kieran Evans, and Marcus Denanga, who has 25 yeah. goals this season. There is plenty uh, of firepower on that bench if Gateshead head are not in the position that they want to be in uh, with with 20 30 minutes to go in this game we are live i'm sure you've told people we'll tell people again we're live on the bbc sport website and app this afternoon if you're listening to us that way you'll hear from both rob elliott and greg ollie later on but let's hear a bit from the gateshead captain just now because as i mentioned they were at wembley 12 months ago in the fa trophy final but it did not go well that day uh, a distinctly below par performance a one nil defeat to halifax it was a dreadful game of football all around it was a horrible goal to concede as well Kevin but Terry greg ollie says therefore doing? there is a wrong to be righted. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, we probably owe it to ourselves to go and, and put a, like, a better Just performance watching, in um, there. Um, obviously, the squad was depleted that day and we had 12 or 13 fit senior There's players that minutes were to cup tied, so this year would be different, but again we have to to go and perform tomorrow and be yeah, because there. there's two divisions between you uh, which puts all the pressure on you and you know expectant crowd etc a crowd that's been to Wembley last season as well but you you should be winning this game you, you should be beating a team that's two divisions below you yeah, well you'd like to think so um, so you can uh, hear everything okay and I was saying and even in our league anyone can beat anyone so this is a Macclesfield team that have I'll just, uh, turn a relatively the, big uh, budget who can attract so players from high leagues. So <clears throat> whether they're two leagues below, I don't think it really matters in a game like this. And semi-finals are relatively cagey and we hopefully can grasp by the horns and do what we did last year in the semi-final and be a couple of goals up by 20 minutes time so that's the that's and then not concede three ideally yeah, after yeah, that yeah in yeah. goal penalties and stress again <laughs> yeah fingers crossed that doesn't happen again today colin they could do without that 
Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's worth pointing out just in case it does become relevant later on. No extra time uh, in any round of the FA Trophy until the final, actually. So if it is level, we go straight to penalties. Yeah, it was a it was a very very stressful second half and end of the the semi final against Barnet Gateshead, as, as Greg always just said. There went ahead early on. They were three 0 up just uh, just after half time, and then Barnet got one back and then a second back, and then That'll in the, the fourteenth minute absolutely. of injury time, this time last year made it three all should have had the psychological advantage going into the penalty shootout and in fairness to Gates had they scored all four in that shootout so yeah we hope we don't have that later on a much more comfortable afternoon would be very welcome for what is going to be a big crowd here as well a decent away crowd already Macclesfield are very very well supported particularly for the level they play at and uh, yeah just do not we want the same outcome but not the same process please absolutely There's all, it's a big day non-league wise elsewhere as well in the National League North Colin Blythe Spartans they are at home to rush all a big game if they are to hopefully <laughs> stay safe of relegation Colin. Um, I think if they beat Rush All, which is much more easily said than done, then they'll be fine. They'll be six points clear of, of uh, Rush All and hopefully Farsley if they lose today as well. They'd be six points clear with uh, two games to go for Blythe, three games to go for the other yes. two, but still, six points clear with three games to go. I think they'd be fine, So, they, but they have to win, and wins have not come easily for Blythe Spartans in the, in the second half of this season particularly. They, they need to settle their own crowd down today as well. I think Croft Park will be a nervy place until things are going well, a tense place. Um, Bly, this, this, we, we've talked about this all sorts of times, all sorts of occasions since they were taken over. For Bly, it's all about next season. All, all they're interested in is about the summer and it's about next season and what changes. But they have to be in National League North for any of their grand plans to come to fruition. So one more win and they'll be fine. But it's not as easily said as as, uh, as, as easily done as it is said. And one team hopefully trying to get out of National League North South Shields there comes to Bishop Stortford this afternoon they still have their playoff hopes very much alive yeah Bishop Stortford were a funny team they're in a funny position they are I mean they're relegated and they were relegated weeks ago they've, they've only won I mean they've won six games out of 42 all season and, and, and if, if uh, South Shields score today that'll be the hundredth goal that Bishop Stortford have conceded in the league but it also means they've got nothing to play for the shackles are off and they can they can relax a bit and they're playing for their futures Bishop Stortford uh, the players so oh. South Shields are in a, a different kind of position we'll probably mention the, the, the Northern Premier East this. in just a minute but South this Shields is going to massively put a dent the in Ipswich Town's automatic promotion what's so this to get the on the board Tony Book I think we need a new manager in yes a win today would almost certainly take them back into the playoff places because there's so many teams around them lots of work to be done from the start next season yeah they need to win their last three Games of the season back and hope that track. somebody else slips up somewhere else. Kev says yeah, funny. Just ooh, quickly ooh, running through the other games, non league wise today. Morpeth, wow. there and then go on, Norwich City have East just division, beaten Washington, Ipswich Town. Colton, Dunstan playing that Dunstan is Borough massive for Morpeth them. Because of their pitch issues, concert away to Grantham and Heaven Town away to. It's home, sorry, to Osset United in the Scotch League. Very good. BGC Gaming or two. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Rose. Colin White, thank you very much. Are you all well? Gateshead versus Macclesfield in the semi-finals of the FA Trophy, Colin and Paul Dixon with commentary available via the BBC Sport website and app. And just quickly, uh, in cricket, no play at Durham today in Chesley Street, play abandoned due to the weather. Here's our cricket commentator, Martin Emerson. Well, Durham's way to begin their new so county Norwich championship now season the continues after they've day two it, like, of their really opening game well. was abandoned just like day one. The, referee the umpires Summers. Bob White and Richard Kettlebrook said parts of the outfield remained too soft and too wet following heavy rain in recent days. There's hardly been any rain overnight, but the ground staff say the water table is very high following prolonged poor weather in recent months. So they'll try again against Hampshire tomorrow on what should be day three. Now this is the first time that I can oh, see that Durham have lost the two uh, opening days of a season. Playoffs, Prior to this, they lost it. day one here in 1996 against North Hans. That was on May the 2nd though. And they also lost day one against Worcestershire in 1999. That was on April the 13th. Hopefully we'll have some play tomorrow then. Durham against Hampshire in the uh, in the county championship. Just quickly back to football. A uh, couple of early kickoffs in the Premier League. Manchester City are currently beating Crystal Palace 4 2. We're in the stoppage time there. And in the Championship, Norwich are beating Ipswich Town in the derby. Uh, Norwich winning 1 0 going to the fifth minute of added on time there. And just very quickly in ice hockey today, the Whitley Warriors have their playoff semi final currently in action against the Billingham Stars, but trail after the second period by a goal to nil. Time though to choose your commentary you would like to listen to this afternoon. 
for Newcastle United versus Fulham at Craven Cottage with Matthew Raisbeck and John Anderson. You'll have to be listening on our FM frequency. And for Sunderland versus Bristol City, you have to have to be listening via DAB Digital Radio or Freeview Channel 719. And if you want to listen to Gateshead versus Manglesfield, you have to listen to that one via the BBC Sport website. And app. our respective commentary teams will be, th- will be with you in just a moment. Matt Bailey at breakfast. You know me, Colette. I've always got my finger on the pulse of cool music. <laughs> and the latest... <laughs> what are you laughing for? The latest big DJ in dance music is a guy called Lenny Pierce, and he's making his name by remixing nursery rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, wheels on the bus, absolute banger. What about if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands? Play school, go wild! <laughs> Nurseries across the UK. <laughs> Hold your dummies in the air! <laughs> Matt Bailey at breakfast. Back Monday morning from 6. BBC Radio Newcastle. Total Sport. North East. The sound of... The sound of Sunderland. Clark, Clark still going! Oh! What a goal that is! Did some care, I'm going to go for some of like a three and a for Sunderland. Just because of the fact... Go on! Clark, go to his right foot! Oh! That's the two of them got it to prove on that. Goal that is, by the way. Clark smashes it into the corner! Great Sport kicks off here. BBC Radio Newcastle. Welcome back to the Stadium of Light. Sun is shining, it's bright. It is very breezy though, Benno. It's very warm. It is. The wind is getting up uh, in every sense of the word as we build towards kickoff at 3 o'clock. We hear from Luke O'Neill and Mike Dodds. We're going to hear from Rob Mason, Sunderland's club historian, in just a moment as well. Firstly, recap of the teams Patterson in goal for Sunderland, Hume, Ballard, O'Neill, perhaps a surprise at left back. Hjelda comes back in, Neil Equa. Rig, Aushish, Clark and Job is the starting eleven. The bench is Bishop, Pembele, Hamir, Roberts, Burstow, Mundell, Styles, Elise and Dat. There is no bar in the squad this afternoon. Uh, hopefully find out reasons why afterwards. Bristol City, Max O'Leary and goal. <coughs> Looks like they're going with a 4-4-1-1. Oh, yeah, George that. Tanner, Zach Viner, uh, Hayden Roberts and Cameron Pring, the back four. Mark Sykes, oh. Jason Knight, Matty James and uh, yeah, Anise Memetti across the middle. Then Scott Twine, who's on loan from Burnley, playing just behind Good show last night. Wells, the uh, Bermudan international who scored the winner at Plymouth last time out. Uh, so much to mull over there. Rob Mason, I introduced him just a few minutes Good ago. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rob. Uh, any thoughts on the starting 11? Um, well, I'm surprised Yelda's back in. I'm surprised Bar's not playing. I was, um, uh, you know, talking to I'm Mike Dodds on Thursday, and while he wasn't giving and, uh, the team away, the at jokes all, at the end you know, was, we were asking about why Bar had been left out at the uh, at well, the Blackburn game. Who's the guy that, 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 that joke lasted said, for well, a half you know, hour? And that was, it. Oh, that was the punchline. It's a difficult thing to ask him to play. Um, two games in in, yeah. in four days when he can't really eat. Well, sunset, but he, Jeez, I, I got the yeah. impression that Bar would be involved. Around the house, he's not even on the bench. Would suggest that he's maybe picked up a knock in training. You would think so. Those are surprises. Prediction, Cabby, you've got to go I'm for nil nil. Very nil pleased to see yeah? Jack Clark starting. Just as I'm pleased to see uh, Chris Riggs starting. Hopefully they'll uh, give us some uh, some threat up front. And There's in a huge field. score just gone through. Right. Uh, Norwich um, just beaten Ipswich. Three couple of things need to mention. One was this ongoing. <laughs> Good Friday statistics. <laughs> um, um, one of them, I got a phone call in the week. I reckon they're going to uh, make Albert each other in the playoffs, you know. I hope it was Albert. Be a um, that. Forgive me, I've made a mistake there. Uh, called me and he was saying, yeah. regarding the statistics about goals is, scored yeah. on Good Fridays, yeah. and the statistic is that Sunderland so now have tallied 128 goals on that Good Friday, which is the second I mean, highest Leeds total behind be Grimsby Town, who've now scored 131, because mm-hmm. they scored one last Good Friday. Now, um, the reason being, so apparently, Thompson's according got, to Alba, uh, is three that games for and 50 years, uh, Grimsby Town petitioned on switch, the um, football only league to play at home on know. Good Friday because that was the day the Dockers had a good long got a day off and yeah. boost their crowd, they'd yeah. always get a bigger crowd. Of if course, the are yeah. officially uh, relegated, sort of, aren't they? Yeah. Yes, there is the argument that it doesn't matter, you score goals home and away. 
but you, you would argue, I think, quite strongly. Mike, how are you doing? If you're playing from home, Melbourne, you're probably Australia. more likely to score goals than you are playing. Who do you away. think well, will win today? Most teams do score more now. goals at home over a season in a way. The team Obviously, selection is out um, by our good friend Gordon Seymour. It's the Football League and the Premier League. posted at the pin section at the, the top. Season, the vast majority of them will have more goals than the goals for their home games and their away games. So, in the light of you asking me that question, Nick, yeah, there's only two places left to go. My go-to Grimsby Town man. Who is Harry Barrett? A name that Sunderland supporters, if they buy the match programme and have bought it, I know we've been wins and missing that new one, but at least it's not us down there. You know what I mean? In the match programme in the days when I edited it, and uh, Harry's my go-to Grimsby Town man. Grimsby's his first love. So, um, and I'm just uh, I put that to him. He says, "Yeah, he says over the years, particularly from about I think he said the 20s to the 70s." There were no, three aware, different Grimsby yeah. Town chairmen who were all very, very influential. Oh, uh, sorry, Jacob. Sorry, mate. And he says, I'm sure they will have had something to do with the fact that you know Grimsby always managed to get a home game on a good Friday, which because of the, the days that the Dockers got off, um, you know, was always a day when Tea Grimsby drinker, hello. How are you doing? To get their biggest attendance of the season, or certainly one of the biggest attendances of the season. So that's how it worked out. But yes, it's strange. It's a, a very... Uh, I, I love statistical quirks, but this is a particularly really obscure clear. one, I've got to say. But yeah, I think we've got uh, the bottom of it. And this thing stands... The subscriber uh, here Grimsby are the only one of the 92 teams in the Premier or Football um, League. I can't add officially down yet. No, and but and now they we know will a particular be reason soon, why Grimsby, of all teams, have, have got such a we'll good record over the one decade. We'll be at even 1-1 draw. And of course, some of them hold the this one. Well... Uh, we'd like to we'd like to hold a higher ground in the in the league position rather than worrying about where we are in the Good Friday stats. But yes, next time we come round to a Good Friday game, let's hope it can continue. But more importantly, after the after the uh, unacceptable result and performance on Monday, let's hope we come out this afternoon and uh, turn know. things around, show a lot more about us, um, get stuck in, and more most importantly, get a good result. Um, Not just, a good just film referring back to the result on Monday, hey. listening to various callers on Total Sport during the week on Radio Newcastle and talking to supporters, most have agreed that that's probably the worst. Has any of you guys seen, seen that film, Groundhog Day? Yeah. You know, the, the fi even the five-one against Stoke. I, I think was the, it was bookmarked in a sense with all, the Alex Neal situation. With, 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 look, with all due respect to Blackburn Rovers who obviously were organised and competent on Monday and their finishing was clinical. They had a day when everything just about went in for them. But I have a three and a half hour drive. Say that again, I thought was that. So I've got plenty of time to reflect as I drive on the performance I've just seen. And I'm not, give, I'm, I'm not one given to saying this is the worst I've ever seen, this was the best I've ever seen. But I've been coming to watch Sunderland for 57 years and it's certainly... Has any of you seen that film Groundhog Day? Have it was one of the it? worst performances I've ever seen. Because normally on a day when the team do badly, you think, well, you know, two, three, it's maybe four really players actually did Honestly, quite just well. Honestly, just imagine being a Sunderland fan. But on Monday, with a possible exception, ironically, of the goalkeeper, who I don't think could be faulted for the goals, um, I don't think there was anybody who came off the pitch and when they reflected on their own performances, I don't think there was any of the starting 11, except possibly for the goalkeeper, who wouldn't have been happy at letting five goals in, obviously. I don't think there'd be anybody else who would no, go home and think, well, that was a shocking result, it was a shocking performance, the team did really badly, but I was all right. I think every single individual would not need to be told that they had not been up to, stra up to scratch, they'd not done themselves any justice on, uh, on Monday, and hopefully the, uh, the other side of that coin is that all 11 of them come out from kickoff today, you know, absolutely desperate to show that they are much better than they showed on Monday. And the supporters, of course, deserve that, as, as does everybody associated with the club deserve that. Bizarrely, last night on Total Sport, Benno, I think, am I right? Did I hear someone reading out, was it Colin, read out the stats for the game? Yes. And the stats, actually, if you yep. looked at those stats in isolation and yep. didn't know the result, yep. you'd think Sunderland would have probably drawn the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw. I, I looked at the BBC stats in, in in the press room on Monday before the two managers or head coaches came in to do the press conference, and I saw that on uh, on shots, on shots on target, on corners, that was exactly equal. Mm -hmm. Blackburn, I think, had committed two more fouls and Sunderland had Scotland. marginally more possession. How are you doing? But there's Scotland only what Sunny Scotland. What was Sunny Scotland? Two one uh, to the lads. There's there's only one stat that matters, yeah, what that is, and that is the result definitely. of the game. And the result of the game was not just a defeat; it was a it was a, an, an appallingly heavy uh, defeat. 
and not not good enough. Um, Leicester City won the league. What, it was a 2015, was it? They won the Premier League. And I think it was probably only three or four games in the season. They had more possession than the other team. It doesn't people matter. Hit the leg what matters is great. come the end of, and tomorrow morning to when you buy your Sunday results, paper you. and you look down the football results. It's not going to say Sunderland 63% possession, Bristol City for 37% possession. It's going to give them number of goals scored in the game. That's all that matters. And on Monday, Blackburn was streets ahead in terms of that in the fight in, in winning 5-1. Putting that to one side, then moving on. Um, that's, some stats for you. Oh yeah, well yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> stats, 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 stats can actually be a good thing. Yeah, they can be a good thing. Can they? Good Friday stats are always a good thing. Okay. <laughs> well, big, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You're gonna hang yeah, your hat on that one. I'm gonna drag, yeah. hang yeah. Hang yeah. The, I'm gonna drag <laughs> those statistics out to the end of the yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Some sad news. Uh, reading off today, Dick Rooks, who used to play yeah. for both. Bristol City and Sunderland. Yeah, just Dickie Rooks, just, just as I came into the ground today, somebody shouted me over and, and said, have you heard that Dickie Rooks has died? And, um, Jennifer, welcome. You know, a lot of people will be um, here hello, lads the first time as, as we Malta. talk about it now. And if you're, uh, here, if you're please, a supporter if you who was coming in the early 60s, um, that'll Sonny be very Rablon familiar. In MDA, he was a local lad, he was a centre-half. Yeah, he well played, I think it was 40 games for Sunderland, here, but and then right. moved on, he actually moved on to Middlesbrough, to get played well for Middlesbrough, Catholic. and then when he was about 29, having come through the ranks at Sunderland, being a young lad at Sunderland, played for Borough, he, he was 29, he moved out of the area, and he went to Bristol City, and he, he who, you know, as it happens, we played today, and he played just under 100 yeah. games, 96 I think it was, for Bristol City, before going on to a, a, you know, a, a career in local football and, and even abroad you know he coached in Zanzibar he managed Scunthorpe United came back to the North East to take Stead, a job good South afternoon but Hope ironically well. as we're playing today. for yes, City today I'd actually done a feature on him in this afternoon's programme so Hope there is a, well. a, a little feature right on there. Dickie Rooks this afternoon and lo and behold um, the gentleman was in his 80s I think he was something like 83 or 84 and we're, obviously we're very very sorry that, that he's passed away and, and even speaking to uh, a fellow that you will know, Nick, and Gary Monday, will know, Andy, who's one of the Literally stewards did, in the press box, chatting to Andy. Andy. Andy was saying, oh, I used to play on the same team as him when we were lads. And um, if, if Gary chips in with this in a minute, Gary told me a little anecdote about Dickie Rooks as well, which you know I'll let Gary mention. But as always, when somebody who's you know a former Sullivan player passes away, condolences to family, you. friends, and we'll try our best to pay tribute to Dickie Rooks in due course, properly in the match programme. And of Does course, come the end of the calendar year when we have our minutes applause hey. for the players. I will be writing about him again on that particular occasion. I know there's been some social media chatter today that they'd like to see applause on the 83rd minute here today. Whether that comes You've for Carl is always a bit of a... Really, we'll yeah. piece that one as to how many people have read the posts, but um, it, would be, it would be nice if it, it were to happen today. Yeah, <coughs> and... I got a text this morning regarding Dickie Rooks and uh, lovely man and as Rob just said there, uh, the person who kept him out of the team mm -hmm. was, was Charlie Early. Was Charlie Early and mm -hmm. uh, the way I got to know Dickie Rooks is I brought my first house from Dickie Rooks. Um, uh, hey, is Clark fully and, fit? Uh, got to know him know? Quite, quite well, mm. he left the he's area but he he's moved starting, back he? yeah, yeah, to yeah. the area and um, sorry to hear about obviously uh, what's happened. Yes, sad news, sad news. Um, brighter news on the uh, played for both clubs front. Only 15 feet away from us at the moment is Gary Hours, who's here working for BBC Radio Bristol. Indeed, and, and Gary obviously was a, a hugely popular player at Sunderland, gave everything he had for the shirt on over 300 occasions, went to Bristol City in an exchange deal that brought Martin Scott uh, up, up, up to Sunderland and Gary went on to do great things for Bristol so City. The, the, very, the, the evidence of that is he's the guy what? that Bristol City have got doing the, doing the summary. You, you don't get a job like that unless you've actually made a real impact at a football club. But Gary made a big impact at, at both clubs and has always been a, a, a top lad. Um, bigging you up, Gary. We're bigging you up yeah. here. <laughs> and he's looking very smart as well, which is not one for radio, but he, he's looking very dapper. In fact, I think he might have just strolled here after being to a wedding. Maybe he's going no, to reception he's, later. He's not been home. Right. <laughs> yes. From last night, he's had a night out in Newcastle. But he's having another one know, out, I think. Just, as well. indeed, yeah. but just touching on um, Gary Owls there, Robin. Yeah. You, you mentioned, and you knew what you were going to get. You know, he's a local lad, mm -hmm. 
but it's full of energy. You knew Absolutely. what you, you knew what he was gonna get when he went on that pitch. You know, we had Gary Owls on one side and we had Gordon Armstrong. Yeah, who was on the other side, and uh, you know, we talk. When you talk about, about commitment, one yes. of my one of my overriding memories is of Gary going in for a 50-50 tackle uh, in a derby with Newcastle, and you might think there's not much in that. That's that's what you'd expect. But in Gary's case, the ball was at pretty much foot level. Um, hello, James B. Hope you well. Yeah, I'm header. fine, mate. I'm fine. It's one of my well. overriding memories of Gary O's. Yeah, and, and that's what we're talking about. You know, <coughs> I was, at, you know, obviously I was able to play with the likes of Gordon Armstrong and the likes of Gary Owers and the John Kays. And, you know, when we talk about characters, them are the characters who you had in your team and, you know, they didn't like to lose. You know, they gave 100% and you can rely on them because if you went into battle they're the sort of players who you want behind you absolutely 100 percent and casey uh, you, you probably saw him gary yeah. casey was here on monday yes yeah had a little bit of chat with john on, on monday it was great to see him yeah and, you know we keep shall we say talking about these old players and the likes of you just mentioned there john k but he was a character fantastic player off the pitch you know lovely lovely man off the pitch but once he crossed that white line there's only one thing he wanted to do yeah. was win. Yeah. Could do with that, a few of those. Yeah, absolutely. I think. He, uh, well, the, the people were talking about, you know, John John K, G Gary Owens, mm -hmm. indeed Gary yeah. Bennett. You know, they, they're the sort of people you do want on your side, not against you. And uh, you know, we, we talk about commitment and effort, and that's why those players are all still very, <laughs> very popular players at Sunderland, because you know, like any footballer. I don't care who you're talking about, the best footballers in the world, you have good games and you have bad games. The difference is right. the best players have a higher percentage of good games, but they still have the odd off day. But what's not excusable is a day when you don't give 100%. Those players who I'm talking about with a commitment is because there was never a game in history where those players that's did not give 100% well, for a red and white striped shirt. Yeah, that's and that's what we're expecting this afternoon from the lads who are quite to wear a red and white and shirt this teams, afternoon. Definitely. Indeed, Rob, thank you Cheers, all the very best. Rob. We'll chat so to Rob hours, on Saturday week, today week, when we're at right. West Bromwich. Albion at the Hawthorns Tuesday night course we're at uh, Ellen Road for the game against Leeds United. Uh, three changes, Helder, Clark and Rigg coming in for Styles, Mundell and Barr. The, uh, and um, who was on the right last week? Mundell. Mundell. Mundell was on Rigg and Barr. There's three, there's it, three, yeah. there's three, three there's changes. Three changes. I'm trying to think the three. Roberts. 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 That's who it was. They're Callum Styles. For, that's right. Callum Styles and uh, Mundell. Mundell. Yeah, there's three. So that's the three change of this afternoon uh, yeah look it's it's not quite gone away that 5-1 defeat after the game last Saturday afternoon I spoke to the Sunderland captain Luke O'Neill. Luke um, my daughter's come up and said uh, expressed his anger um, said there's there was an exchange at half time and now it's up to the the group or him to decide whether it's going to be a group session or individual session all right Doug clearly, you just got up sitting having your you know, breakfast while watching yeah what's hands over where you it's are it's going to be anger all round isn't it yeah I had to um have a little bit of time after the game to yeah kind of just decompress a little bit because yeah uh, emotions anger a lot of emotions were there at the end of it but um you know people might say it's one to forget I think it's far from that I think it's one one to remember one to use and one to motivate and it'll never happen again um, so yeah, big week in front of us in terms of you've got to dissect that's chalk and cheese from the weekend. But when you have a performance that bad, there's there's so much to take from it um, that that we will. And um, it's overcast, yeah, just, just mild, it's really mild. Uh, cause the winds are blown from the south. Sails down, uh, let um, Dodgy it's, down. It's, um, you know, it's gave us windy. all the information we needed it and to not do the negotiables of running harder, looking after the ball. Um, if you don't do that in any game, we've got no chance. So. Um, I know he'll get kind of the brunt of it, but as players, myself, got to take a lot of responsibility there. Um, I know you, you've all often said what a tight-knit group slow. you all are, and I think that um, rolls over into your relationship with your coaches as well. And I think it be accepted that Mike Dodd's in a difficult position Six because he worked closely yeah. with you and you go back to working it. closely with you and whoever comes in. So is it harder in that sense to have what he would describe and what you would probably describe as honest conversations after a result like this no far from it um you know dodsey from from you know every single time he's, he's he said what needs to be said 
um, and we we had a chat amongst those players that we need to do far better. You know, he can give us all the information in the world if we go out and perform like that. Th there's no chance. So th that's where we've got to hold up the mirror ourselves. Um, Hello. And we've just got to get better. Um, How are you doing? There'll be some honest conversations, like there always is. You know, when we've lost previous games, when it's been close after Leicester, there's, there's still the honest conversation. How are you doing? How are you, well, doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? There's way to lose a game, and the way we lost today was um, was so unacceptable. Could you could you in any way assimilate what happened or what didn't happen from Friday to Monday? It's completely polar opposites. Yeah, it was chalk and cheese, and I think it's going to be a really easy one uh, as well as hard. Beaten from time. Australia. To Hello, John Felton. Um, Got a few people from Australia. Go through it and watch the game back. So. Um, it's going to be an important week ahead because it's important that it's, you, know, <laughs> you can go two ways you either hide or you, you come out you know chest out and um, you, you come back better because of it Can you get a sense in the game of it unravelling around you as, as the game goes on? Yeah I think there was there was individual errors um, uh, where we've all got to be accountable for um, there was a lot of unenforced errors which um, if you do enough of them, then it's going oh, to make the game a little bit more difficult. Oh, so, there's my good friend Andy there who um, wants the boys to bar in America. Uh, we'll How are you doing, that. Andy? Runs stats, runs in behinds, um, ball possessions. There's Hopefully he's going to sort so, me out, um, upgrade my lot, PC so kind of soonish. Quite fresh after the game to pick and kind of identify a few, but um, we'll, we will go through it. Six games left. Uh, at least you're not in a position where you haven't got a game next week where you can put things right. I mean, that's a big game in the sense that people will expect a reaction, a hundred percent, as 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 do we. Um, so we will we will watch it back. We will work as hard as as as, as we we can, um, and we will go put things right um, this week. Total My prediction: I'm going for the Whenever Newcastle and Sunderland play at the here. same time, you'll find our black and white commentary on FM and our red and white commentary on DAB and oh, preview like yeah, channel seven one nine. BBC Radio Newcastle. Luke O'Neill, we'll hear from Mike Dodds in a moment, but uh, you can hear the wind starting to build here. Actually, you can probably, t and uh, one wonders what will happen this summer. Three views listen to um, down Portsmouth. Anyway, well, whatever the names are, the most from Matt Cabby, hello three to the three of you down Portsmouth. Hi, Cabby, just t tuned in from a very windy call room. Yeah, you've got a really rough down there. You have. Has it been spinning round your head a thousand times Monday afternoon? Have you relived every kick? every minute of that of that game to try and work out what went wrong yeah I think um, your initial reactions after the game you want the game the next day to um, correct the performance we had a we had a really good discussion as as a group on Wednesday still really angry with the group if I'm being completely honest and um, I'm expecting a, everyone is expecting a much a much better performance on uh, Saturday how, how did that group take it? Because it's a young group. It, it, I mean, it could be quite a. So do you guys? In your do you guys career, think we should have a manager like in when you're the age that some of those players before are? Before the end of the season, or there's no quite, much um, damaging, if you like, in the long run. I'll be honest with you. The kind of discussion I had with them, I didn't give them much opportunity to have an opinion. Um, I said I was. Um, All right, Callum. Lad. Angry, disappointed, embarrassed. Um, I didn't see it coming, and for whatever reason, it did come. Exile yeah, also listening from Portsmouth. No How are you doing, Luna? How are you doing? Six games, and I've been left under no illusions that. that um, from the windy Portsmouth, I did. Luca and I spoke after the game as well and said, "You will probably get the brunt of the." Anybody that's new, just the click the subscribe and click the like button as well. And be much appreciated. It wasn't Thank as you. if they weren't told what to do, and and then when they went out on the pitch they didn't execute what you told them to do and that's and I've taken the team obviously early in the season and um, for this period um, and it's the first time that I feel I've been let down Hello, Pierre, yeah. but ultimately I also no rush says tea drinker I know that I'm the head coach of the football club and ultimately it's the performance how are you doing Pierre do you okay will ultimately land at my door but I've left them under no illusions the preparation for the game was no different to how we've prepared previously I think uh, hello, Paul Freeman. How are you doing? Um, got 93 people tuning in already, and we've not even kicked off yet. Yeah, I think. Um, um, you're welcome, Paul. Anytime. They, they, Thanks for no tuning in. How disappointed I am with them. David Jackson. Do you um, look back at it? Dodds, Sands. 
good as that. Couple of you need to score. Game during you slate the players and took no blame for yourself. You need to score. Same team that you picked at. And uh, Rusty Mackam and Gran Canary, how are you doing? You After Beal, a proper stand until the end of the season, but pointless. Um, right now it's over. But the Cardiff game, we had the third highest running stats that we've had all season. Um, they put a huge amount of effort into that. I just felt freshening up the sides of the wings um, was something that was, was potentially going to be needed in the game. Um, like I've said previously, I win games and you know if I if I had won on, on Monday, you know, it'd look like a good decision. Obviously the performance was a terrible performance and one that I'm embarrassed about. So obviously those changes are gonna be highlighted even more based on the performance. But you know, we made two changes, both of them on the side of the side of the pitch where we where we felt that just freshening up those areas of the pitch would give us um, some more opportunities within the game. Obviously that didn't happen but hindsight could be a wonderful thing. And obviously there'll be some changes for Saturday. Um, I was going to say, you've got personnel now available, Jack Clark's back, um, and how are you looking with the likes of Elise? I mean, and Evans hasn't been involved in both squads uh, over the Easter weekend. Yeah, so um, Corey had a little bit of a reaction in training, uh, nothing major, so he'll be, he'll be he's um, out with the group, again, he's back to kind of part training. Um, he'll be back with the group fully next week. He won't be in the squad this weekend, but um, obviously we want to try and get Corey back as quickly as we can. Adji played 90 minutes on Wednesday. I think was really important for Adji psychologically, really more than anything, because that will be his first 90 minutes in a very, very long time. So Adji will be in contention for the weekend as well. Um, and Bristol City, I mean, remember it well down at Ashton Gate. How angry you were that afternoon, and you described. When you came back in for this sort of third spell, it's unfinished business, and it's Bristol City. That is definitely unfinished business for you, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And listen, there's two things from my point of view. Obviously, correcting what what happened on Monday, which I think is um, first and foremost the most important thing. Um, and like I said, when we when what do you think about Rusin? Do you think Rusin would be a miss if he went? Um, we were, a few we people said he's he's, he's not championship quality games, to get us up there games at this level. If if you aren't Fully committed to to put in 100% in. We we um, we found that out on on, um, on Monday, and we we found that out last time we played Bristol. So that's something that we need to correct from uh, for for tomorrow. I mean, perversely as it as it may sound, is there part of the defeat against Blackburn? If you were looking for um, inspiration or, or or something to spur you, similar echo on that. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't miss echo. I wouldn't like miss uh, Harry Styles. There's, there's a few can go on and on. One reason for them to up the up their game if you like for these six games. I love the fact you're trying to put a positive spin on it. <laughs> um, I would prefer that we didn't perform like that, and I would prefer that I'm not falling out with the players to the magnitude that I did when we reviewed the game. I'd prefer all those things, um, but unfortunately, sometimes players need uh, recorrecting and they need um, redirecting. Robert Scott slated his last match, like, but I think a lot of that comes down for, for the football club really because the performance was completely unacceptable. So the players are under no. He's uh, not fit, is he? He's not they, fit. They, they owe everyone a performance tomorrow. Um, and Bristol City, then. I mean, what do you expect of them? The last two games, two one 0 wins, but in very different circumstances. They've beaten the then leaders Leicester, and they've beaten a team that Top City working down here so in the Royal Navy Palace from Hendon. Other lads are yeah, from yeah, Henshaw. Um, I know the well, um, how are you doing? Now? I know of the coach. Gordon Seymour should have a manager in now, even I, is, I as it's an observer, so he can see what's you, required so he's, for he's the summer. Coach. Um, he's got really, really we all would stop know whether KLD and that's going to be here in the summer, do we? Paul Freeman says, I think Graham Murdy would have been better than Dodds. Really positive results, um, David really Jackson, well Dodds said he wins games. I, I have missed them. Back to Gordon Seymour. We know and Tad Gustian said, Somerset would forecast being yet to arrive. Total Sports. North East. My opinion is we don't have a manager in BBC Radio Newcastle. No indication from the welcome that they're getting that there's a flashback, if you like, to Monday's defeat. It's all Well, I'm just putting the um, commentary on mute for the time being because the music when the players come out. Um, John Felton has Dodd found Bale scripts in a cupboard somewhere. Hi. <laughs> Page Lee, I hope we keep Rusin. You like him. Um, Steads Rusin would be better in Clark's or Roberts' position and off the wing. Gordon Seymour, send the daft dodger back to Ukraine. 
David Jackson, he hasn't been given many minutes. He says about Russian. Doug, think KLD is happy finishing mid-table this season. But interesting to see what happens off-season. And will be as well. Um, David Jackson, Job and Rig up front. What we got to lose? Yeah, I would say. Kevin Taylor, what did you think about the four caveats, even the coach? Well, I would take him better than what Dodds surely is, surely. Roberts has put a beef on. <laughs> Stead says, how, where? Cheers for all your comments already and <coughs> letting the uh, keeping the chat active, guys. Hi, Lauren. Um, it's just have to search on Google or somewhere, Lauren. I think see if you can find a stream or something. Swift Arena. How are you doing, mate? You all right? I've just got the commentary on mute at the moment because the music's playing and uh, YouTube doesn't like the copyright side of things. But I can help falling in love with you. Teams changing ends and Sunderland will attack the north end of the state. So I will now mute myself and let you guys listen to uninterrupted commentary. Let's go. That change, which uh, seems logical, asking for that because Sunderland certainly wouldn't have elected to defend the Roker end in the first half. Bristol City in a huddle, a break from that now. Goalkeeper Max O'Leary in uh, turquoise like the referee actually just maybe slightly darker jogs back to his six yard box below the bristol city fans there are many of them there's a, a good turnout from the west country for the robins this afternoon who will get the game underway in the breeze anthony patterson away to our right the roker end in uh, yellow there are a lot of empty seats it has to be said um but that i guess is no surprise bearing in mind where the football club is at the moment and on reflection Monday's game the ball has gone out for a throw to Sunderland which Hume in the sunshine at the foot of the east stand takes he finds Equa back to Hume looking for Job's run but uh, Roberts Hayden Roberts gets there first and pokes the ball out for a throw to Sunderland 10-15 yards inside the Bristol City half on this international fans day we've already spoken to a couple of Danes and there are 80 fans from around the world as far as Tasmania have made the trip to the stadium for this afternoon's game Dan Ballard passes it to Luke O'Neill he pushes on you can hear the wind rushing across the roof of this stand as uh, it picks up this afternoon and then the ball played by Pring side, to well would he have been offside would the flag have been raised if he'd made contact because Patterson came out and smashed the ball away but uh, the flag stayed firmly down as Bristol looked to get in behind Sunderland early in the game we're in the second minute it's nil nil here on BBC Radio Newcastle as uh, Bristol City with it over on the far side Pring trying to find Naki Wells down that left wing but it's hooked away again by Sunderland Matty James getting on the end of it it breaks it hangs in the air a moment trying to flick it forward was uh, rig but it's won back by bristol city and naki wells away down this left hand side of the penalty area pulls it back and it's put behind by uh, dan neal on the six yard line as they whipped in bristol city and uh, well with a better place passed that could have been one nil to bristol city yeah he's got away down that left hand side hasn't he Referee's just gone back to remove a few items that have blown onto the, the pitch. It might looks like red plastic 
that uh, this corner will be taken from the right-hand side by Scott Twine. They've done the homework as well. With the left-hand side for uh, Bristol Patterson, City. They? Yeah, they're all um, in the six-yard box. It's whipped and it's punched out by Patterson to the edge of the area, driven back in again from the 18-yard line, but somehow blocked. And now, is that a foul? Oh, said no, no on uh, Rig. No, says Lee Doughty, but Rig gets straight back up and wins the ball back. Plays it into the centre oh. here, and uh, Aushish had to be sharp because he was closed down quickly. Gets the ball out to Jack Clark on the left wing. He's now into the Bristol City half, whips it away from Mark Sykes, finds Dan Neal in the middle of these tackle. He was surrounded by three Bristol City players. And now played across to George Tanner here, who had that uh, shot at the edge of the penalty area that was blocked when the corner was cleared. Played across to Hayden Roberts, and Roberts now out on the left touchline, sweeps it back in to Zach Viner, who's been with Bristol City since he was a youngster and out eventually to Mark Sykes, Republic of Ireland international now, the 26-year-old, former Oxford United midfielder. He's looking to try and get the ball back from Jason Knight down the right wing, but it's been knocked out by Sunderland for a throw to Bristol City, which Tanner, from a Manchester United youngster, will take the right back inside the Sunderland half. Looking for some help here, finds Wells. Eck was on his shoulder, comes back to Hayden Roberts, back again to Viner and back to the goalkeeper O'Leary. Interestingly, that uh, Liam Manning, the Bristol City coach, actually coached Aji Elise and uh, a little while Pierre Equa when he West was in Ham. charge at West Ham under 23s. Yeah, knows them, knows them well. Uh, he brought Declan Rice through the West Ham youth system as well. Liam Manning. Here on the right, it's driven on by Tanner, cleared by Ballard, only as far as Sykes. Aushish whips the ball off, Mark Sykes trying to get away down the touchline, but it rolls away from him, throw to Bristol City in their half on the right-hand side. Tanner will take it again. Bristol City start the game a place above Sunderland in the table in 12th, two points ahead of... Sunderland, O'Neill plays the ball back to Patterson, he clears, kicks it long, up through the middle, looking for Job, he flicked it on with his head, but nobody there running through and onto it, gambling on that, <coughs> and it's back in defence with Bristol City. I know that Gary Hours was saying on uh, Radio Newcastle last night, had a, another conversation as well this morning about Bristol City fans disappointed to see Nigel Pearson sacked, and that's why yeah. Liam Manning's had a bit of a rough ride. Yeah, he's, well, he's popular, wasn't he? he was yeah. similar to Tony, Tony Mowbray. Mowbray. Yeah. Gates had lead Macclesfield by a goal to nil in that FA Trophy semi-final. Are they going to go to Wembley again this season? Free kick to Bristol City, just in front of Mike Dodds. Tanner takes it, finds... Well, there's a little bit of wrestling going on here. Dan Neal's going to be penalised for dragging Scott Twine around. And the free kick comes to nothing, it bobbles through to Anthony Patterson. Rolls it to Luke O'Neill. O'Neill brings this out on the right-hand side, plays it out wide to Hume, inside to Equa, looking to get it up to Rig, quick ball inside to Equa again. And Equa pokes it through to Job, who's held off Jason Knight for Equa to find out Sheesh, and now Clark on the left-hand side. Clark running at Tanner into the penalty area. Slips it through here, but oh, it's a stretch for our sheesh, and it effectively just bounced off the instep of his left foot. And it comes eventually back to Dan Neal on the left-hand side. He finds our sheesh again into the penalty area, goes past one, pulls it back into oh, the lucky. arms of the goalkeeper. They were queuing up, Job and Rig. If the ball could have been hooked back a little bit further. Nil-nil. Yeah. Looks bright, doesn't he, Sheesh. Yeah, uh, that was a nice little move in and out around uh, Jason Knight. Skipped in round him. Just that little bit more precision in the pass than it could have been 1-0 to Sunderland. Like, you know, a few minutes ago, similar story with the pullback from Bristol City on the yeah. goal line. Eighth minute, nil-nil. 
and Gateshead winning 1-0. We're live on BBC Radio Newcastle. Here's uh, Hjelda with a throw, flicked in by Clark, drops to Alshish in the centre circle, finds Hume down the right wing. He's got a bit of space, being closed down now by Pring, but curls a great ball in great and uh, ball. just whipped away from Joe, and it's a corner. Great ball in. You know, that's crying out for an out-and-out centre ball. To Proper get on winger's the end ball, of. wasn't it? And the wind, I think, wind assisted. Lovely curling ball in. Job, it was just flicked off his head. It's a corner for Sunderland. It's their first corner of the game. Below the Bristol City fans, high above in the north stand, Aushish will take the corner kick. The corner flag blowing everywhere. It's driven towards the far post. Job trying to get on the end of it. Now Ballard hooked That's off the safe. line. Keeper didn't get his hands to it, a defender did, and managed to hook it away, and Ballard inches away from scoring the opening goal. Excellent save by O'Leary, somehow he's got to claw that away, but again, good header by Ballard, not enough power behind it. He's done well to get the yeah. header, reacted well. So it could have been 1-0 in the ninth minute, but Ballard's header off the line. And it's still nil-nil as Job tries to put pressure on Max O'Leary, plays it out to Jason Knight. Hayden Roberts has to chase this to the touchline, keeps it in, plays it back to the goalkeeper, who slips as Job closes him down. Hume plays it through to Equa. This is much better this week from Sunderland. Rig now on the right-hand side, Pring in front of him, plays it inside to Equa, taps it back to Hume. Hume on the right side of central midfield, down the right wing then to Chris Rigg, and he swings it back into the centre circle, just left of it to Hjelda, who heads it on to Clark, flicks it in the air, bounces out Unlucky. for a throw to Bristol City. Bristol City Blackburn next on Wednesday night for Liam Manning's team. We're, of course, at Elland Road to face a lead side who've not lost at home this season. Throw, long throw from Tanner. Headed by Ballard down to Hjelda, who steered it back to O'Neill. Across to Hume now. Trying to close him down is Mehmeti, who is uh, Albanian by international, but he was London-born to Albanian parents. Signed from Wickham. You may remember him over those tussles mm -hmm. with Gareth Ainsworth's team over the years. Quick free take, kick taken out to Clark on the left wing from inside the Sunderland half. Here's Clark dribbling on still, passing it though into a defender, clears it to Neil who's urged to shoot, he finds Rigg in the penalty area, takes it through, goes down, no penalty says the referee. Clearly felt he went down far too easily and maybe arguably pushed the ball a little bit too far. Yeah, foul there. And now appeals at the a foul and a free kick to Bristol City on the left wing. Detritus blowing around on the pitch in the wind. Free kick will be taken by Max O'Leary, another who's come through the youth system at Bristol City. 27 years old now, the keeper. The players all over on that far side in the Sunderland half, 11 minutes into the game. It's driven down towards the corner of the penalty area, headed away by Luke O'Neill, comes back to Hume, now Equa. Closed down by Scott Twine, they battle and Equa's fouled. Free kick to Sunderland in the sunshine, the sunshine half of the pitch, the sunny side of the street. Yeah, you just think how important that first goal is. It is, isn't it? And I don't think there's no, there's no getting away from it. You know, Sunderland have shown the weakness when they go behind. Here's our Sheesh, takes it down and lays it off to Clark on the left side of the penalty area, dribbling into the box, plays it into the middle again here, Joe trying to turn on this, then finds Riggs, swings at it, blocks, comes back out to Neil, swings a hand at it, oh. appeals for handball, swings Ashish. a leg at it, I should say, appeals for handball, but Alshish puts the rebound wide. He's got to hit the target there. I know he's a little bit rushed into the shot. I think they were half distracted by the ball coming down off a defender's arm and uh, she swung his leg at it, but he's um, put it a couple of inches, a couple of feet maybe wide of the left post, foot of the post. So uh, they're trying to move the ball around quickly. Well, a bet tempo to the game, isn't there? Yeah, Monday. there is. But they started like this on Monday and then suddenly dropped off a cliff. Now, hopefully they can keep it going. 
ball sails through the middle, headed down by Memeti, but only to rig in the centre circle. He's fouled by Twine. Lee Doughty having a word with the on loan Burnley midfielder. He spent uh, the first half of this season at Hull City, Scott Twine. He was at MK Dons, is that right? He was, yeah. Began at Southampton, Swindon, then MK Dons a season, when, of course, Liam Manning was uh, manager mm -hmm. there. And now he's with him here, but only on loan. Here's O'Neill, drives the ball up through, looking for Job, headed away by Hayden Roberts. Equa gets a foot on it, back to Hayden Roberts, through to Mehmeti. Mehmeti is tackled by Hume, fouled Hume. Well done. Free kick to Sunderland again. Quickly taken by O'Neill to Rig. Rig now back out to O'Neill on the right wing. Another ball played into the box, cleared easily by Roberts. Out to Mehmeti. Behind him is Pring. Pring now closed down by Rig. Hooks the ball up towards halfway, straight on the head of Hume. Now Equa trying just to flick it through to Job. He thought it was fouled, the referee didn't. And played back out by Bristol City. Great block by Ballard. Comes back though here for Zach Viner well to and eventually out for throw to Bristol City. Nil-nil, 14th minute. George Tanner again to take the throw on the right, a few yards from Mike Dodds for Bristol City. Straight down the touchline, little flick on by Sykes, but Ballard's there and he plays it back to Patterson. There's a paper bag whistles past him and a couple of plastic bags <laughs> float around in front of him out to O'Neill across to Ballard here on the left just outside the penalty area and Ballard back across to Luke O'Neill and he's brought this out and again trying to find Job he's onside surely yes down the right Hayden Roberts trying to stick with him Job looking up for an option here just plays it back to Equa Equa now round one challenge gets it to Aushish he looked to try and get it on his left for a shot, but finds Clark down the left of the penalty area. He dribbles into the box, plays it back out to Dan Neal. And Neal to Clark again at the corner of the penalty area, dribbling in, trying to get the ball threaded through between two defenders. It was blocked. Comes back out now to Neal, to Equa. He swings a ball in. Oh. A delicious ball for our sheesh, but he let it bounce out from underneath his feet through to Job. And now Hume lifts one in straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. Yeah. Ashish and Rig went in there and they both missed it. Great ball in. Did it surprise Ashish? I wonder. I hear the wind rumbling on the roof of the stand. The ball's played up to Mehmeti and comes back through here to Luke O'Neill. Now Job quickly lays it off to Hume, back to O'Neill, into the middle to Ballard. Ballard to Gelder, Gelder down the left here now to Jack Clark. Clark is tackled and Mark Sykes or wouldn't run onto the loose ball. Clark tries to get the ball back off him. It's run for Gelder to O'Neill. Takes a deflection into the path of Aushish. Down the right wing now, Rig. Halfway inside the Bristol City half, inside to Aushish. And Aushish plays it across to Jack Clark. Good ball. Heads it on, down the left of the penalty area. Managed to fend off the challenge of Sykes. Sets this up at the edge of the six-yard oh. box and put over the top. Corner. After a challenge on Aushish for a corner. Aushish stabbed at it, but a City defender managed to get a foot to it. And took it over and behind for the corner kick. Sunderland's second corner. Yeah, it's just that final pass. One of the Bristol City substitutes has almost had his eye taken out by the corner flag, then he didn't expect the wind to blow it back so viciously. He's kept himself away from it now, 25 yards further back down the touchline. The corner flag behind Aushish is bending all over in this strengthening wind. Aushish with Clark back down the, the corner flag on the far side. It's almost, it's almost on the floor, horizontal. It's short back to Clark. Clark back here now to Dan Neal. Neal curls the ball towards the far post. Kept in by Hume. Unlucky. But bounces back to the goalkeeper. 
did well there, quite acrobatic from Hume. And uh, I think bowls the, it out. Yeah, I think the wind is behind Sunderland, isn't it? It is at the moment. Which is interesting, the decision that Bristol City took to change ends and the coin toss at the start of the game. The number of empty plastic bags swirling around down the touchline. Blowing across the pitch, blowing, blowing across Anthony Patterson's <laughs> penalty area as well. Ball swung across the pitch to Pring on the left for Bristol City. It's going to be intercepted here by Aqua for Rig. Now to Dan Neal. Back to Ballard on the centre spot to Hjelda. Hjelda plays the. No. Well, poorly actually. Between Clark and Oshish down the left and out for throw to Bristol City. Tanner will take the throw. We're in the 19th minute, live on BBC Radio Newcastle. Nil-nil, but Ballard had a header cleared off the goal line from six yards. Here's the throw, hooked in by Neil. A bit of a tussle between Job and Roberts. Allowed to get away with that, the pair of them. Here's Equa in the middle. Finds Dan Neil just off his shoulder. He's given the ball away. One back by Oshish. Well free kick. The free kick for the foul on Dan Neil. But you can see already from the referee, the way he's refereeing the game, he's letting a lot of things just play on. Mm. Goal. So Equa, Oshish, and uh, Luca Nyans come across. Just a few words. You can see the wind blowing the players shirts Equa having a conversation with Aushish very windy out there Nick it is it is well, where it seems to be strongest is that far corner north northeast corner it's hung in the air the free kick comes back out to Dan Neal puts it back down at the oh, edge of the free kick. penalty area and there's a foul and a free kick to Sunderland foul on Ballard is it yeah he just he's missed that Completely, it's timing. What a good position this is. It's right on the edge of the D, right in the middle. Ballard helped to his feet by Chris Rigg. I was going to say, yeah, the wind seems to be strongest that northeast corner. If you look at the four corner flags, yeah. that's the one that's being blown almost horizontally down to the ground. It's to Sunderland's advantage. You've to got the, to hit it's, it you it seems to be blowing behind Sunderland's backs. Yeah. Good strike here. A huddle round the ball at the moment. O'Neill, Clark, Hume, and Equa. As Dan Neal joins them. Referee trying to organise Bristol City, who formed a wall. Equa or O'Neill, I think. Twelve or yards back, or even Clark. Who would you? Who do you fancy? Clark. Clark. There's a draft excluder for Bristol City lying down behind the the wall. A straight line of Bristol City players, one Sheesh lying on the there. floor. And it's played short and it comes back to Ekwa, drives wall. it into the wall. Another block from the attempt by Clark to shoot and eventually it will roll away towards the far corner and behind for a goal kick. I have to say the Bristol City wall did, its, did, job did its job Yes. And uh, we are approaching a quarter of the game played. It's nil-nil. A reminder, we'll be with you at Ellen Road on Tuesday night. Leeds United against Sunderland. And the top of the table is, ch well, it's going to change again, isn't it? Norwich City beating Ipswich Town 1-0 at lunchtime today in the East Anglian derby. As the ball swept forwards by the right foot of uh, O'Leary, the goalkeeper, in the air. Neil's trying to get his foot round it, finds Aushish, stabbed away by Knight, but comes back to Aushish, but then again one back by Mark Sykes, who dribbles one way, then the other, and shakes off Aushish out wide, halfway inside the Sunderland half, and the ball is stabbed out off Sykes by Helder for a Sunderland throw. We've played 22 minutes, it's nil-nil. Yelder with the throw, headed off Job's head by Viner. 
Kjelda will take this throw just in front of Mike Dodds. And he decides to go down the line to Job, who gets a push in the back, headed away by Viner, headed on by Sykes, picked up by Twine, looking for the run of Wells here, away down the right side of the penalty area. O'Neill challenges him, but Wells holds him off, finds Sykes behind, and now picked up by Knight. Knight slips the ball into the penalty area, through for mm. Wells, and whipped off his feet. Mercifully so from Sunderland's perspective, because he was about to shoot. And here out to Jack Clark on the left-hand side. Clark passing it out to Neil. Neil under pressure from James, plays it across to Hume. Hume now looking to lift it down the right side of central midfield. Hayden Roberts gets in front of Job. He hooks it back into the Sunderland half. Chase back here for Luke O'Neill, who turns it away down the right. Hume inside to Equa, gets away from Twine and turns it back behind him to Hume, into the middle to Ballard. Ballard across here to Hjelda. Hjelda back inside to Dan Neal. Neal on to Equa. Equa turning up to the halfway line for Sunderland, out to Hume wide on the right touchline, looking for Riggs run, but Pring's going to cut this out. Another that has come through the youth system at Bristol City, Cameron Pring. Out from the goalkeeper to Roberts oh. as lost by Knight picked up by Neil right through to Joe now Clark trying oh. to place it punched away by the goalkeeper Unlucky. he picked his spot and it's punched away by O'Leary in the 24th minutes and up to the other end great tackle uh, intervention from goal kick Hume and a goal kick great tackle Trey Hume good effort by Jack Clark, Jack Clark what you've yeah. got to say it's a nice height for the goalkeeper was. The power away. So now the goal kick which Patterson's taken short with Ballard and O'Neill out to Hume inside to Dan Neal. Neal back to Hume down that right touchline in the sunshine. The ball stays in, it's played inside to Rig. Rig now trying to flick it on but showed too much of it to Roberts who plays it back to the goalkeeper who passes it out past Rig to Roberts out to the left-hand side and Mehmeti plays it back to the goalkeeper Sunderland pressing keeping the pressure on and the ball hooked away by O'Leary up to Ballard in the centre circle as she stretches and finds Equa Equa holds off Knight now Jove in the middle is tackled the ball poked back by James and Viner plays it out in front of his coach. 26th minute, nil-nil. Live on BBC Radio Newcastle. 2-0 to Gateshead in the FA Trophy at home to Macclesfield. Hjelda with his throw inside the Sunderland half on the left. You can hear that wind again. Building up in it. It is headed away by Tanner. Neil swings it over on the Ooh. right wing Hume has to well keep done. it in that's well I think the wind sort of got behind yeah. it then inside to Equa into that wind well you only have to watch the debris on the pitch blowing around swirling everywhere Neil out to Clark on the left dribbling on cutting inside now just inside the Bristol City half back Hume. to Ballard Ray Hume wanted it now to O'Neill up to halfway down the right touchline to Hume, Hume back to O'Neill. O'Neill back in the middle here to Ballard. Now to Hjelda, drives it up to Oshish, holding off Viner, who's come away with the ball here. It's slipped through, through to Memeti, I think it is at the edge of the area, but well he's done, tackled Ekwa. by Equa. Excellent. And Equa brings us out through the middle, finds Dan Neal. Neil now pushing it down the left oh. and it's slipped away past Aushish, who's frustrated. Well, again, who was the pass to? Was it to Clark or, or Aushish? Aushish. Fro throw to uh, Bristol City. Tanner, as ever, will take this halfway inside the Bristol City half on the right-hand side. Bristol in... Uh, basically all black the shirts are sort of dark grey and black 
as the ball hooked away by O'Neill. Job heads it across the middle of the Bristol City half. Pring will pass it inside to James, back to Roberts, and uh, Roberts back to the goalkeeper, O'Leary. Job goes to close him down, O'Leary swings it out to the right-hand side, and Hjelda gets his head on it, it bounces for Twine to hook into the Sunderland half, Ballard plays it back to Luke O'Neill. He plays it across to Hume, Hume back to O'Neill, and now to Ballard, Ballard to Hjelda, Hjelda back to Ballard, Ballard plays it short to O'Neill, O'Neill back to Ballard, Ballard forwards here to Oshish, oh, just turns it straight out. Throw to Bristol City, Tanner takes it, finds Twine, tackled by Dan Neal. Ball kept in by Oshish with a little back heel, but it's whipped away by Tanner, but straight into the path of Oshish. Now looking for Job, who took his eye off it slightly, which allowed Bristol to get the ball back to the goalkeeper. The idea was nice, the practice of the idea not quite as good. James in the middle. Roberts up to the halfway line, Naki Wells. Back to Hayden Roberts. Signed from Brighton in the summer where he'd come through the Brighton and Hove Albion Academy. 21-year-old. Sykes is making a run. The ball played up over the top, looking for Sykes down this right-hand side. Pushed over, was he, by Hjelda? The referee says yes. Very, very soft foul. Yeah. The free kick's been given to Bristol City. Hjelda had a word with the assistant then as well. And I think oh, the referee yeah. wants to have a word with him. Hjelda's called across by Lee Doughty. Mark Sykes trying to get involved, being pushed away by the referee. Luke O'Neill's involved there as well. Hjelda's been spoken to. Scott Twine's going to take the free kick, the... Bristol City goalkeepers just come all the way out to the Bristol City technical area for a quick conversation with the head coach. I just think this ball's going to hold up in this wind. It, it works in favour of Patterson. It hopefully will curl up and out rather than in. Sunderland trying to push the line out towards the back of the penalty area. We're in the 30th minute of the game, nil-nil. And Mehmet is out wide. Twine's going to take the free kick. But here he is, Scott Twine with his right, curls it in, Job heads it out, and it'll come right back up to the halfway line where Pring brings it back to the goalkeeper, chased by Jack Clark. O'Leary kicks straight away, back up through the middle, O'Neill gets his head to it, finds Dan Neal, it bounces up to Job, he tried to flick it on with his head here for Rig, back inside to Job, Stumbles slightly, the loose ball's picked up by Equa. Now to Hume, and Hume, on the right side of Bristol City's midfield, plays it out to Rig. Rig back to Equa. Equa chips it across now to Hjelda inside the Bristol City half. Hjelda back behind him to Ballard in his own half, plays it across to Luke O'Neill, and he drives it down the right touchline to Hume. Hume. Brings it inside, flicks it on, looking for Rig, comes back though to Hume, he gets forwards here, Job stabs it back to him, he's trying to dig it out, oh. and the shot in the end, slightly off balance with yeah. his left foot. And it's on his weak side, goes, side yeah, he... right of the you can see right what he's trying to do. Just didn't quite open for him. So still goalless in the 32nd minute here at the Stadium of Light, Sunderland. In this first half, playing from the Roker end up to the north stand where Max O'Leary kicks down the right wing. It's chested out by Hjelda for a throw to Bristol City. George Tanner comes forwards to take this again. Finds uh, Naki Wells back to Tanner on the touchline. Behind him is Knight, Jason Knight, inside. And played forwards by James, Wells in the penalty area, whip well bind off him by Ballard for a corner. Good defending. 
taking no chances there, Dan Ballard just crashing in, knocking the ball behind. Bristol City's second corner. Twine will take this. Both arms raised for the moment in the southwest corner. Then lowers them, replaces the ball on the edge of the quadrant, raises his arms again. And Twine with the corner. Drives this in, headed away by Job again, out for a throw on the far side for Bristol City. Cameron Pring jogging across to take the throw. 25 yards from the left-hand corner. He's stolen a yard or two. Mimetti's down in the corner. And uh, Cameron Pring will find Twine at the corner of the penalty area. He heads it back to behind into Matty James and then back again onto the halfway line to Viner. Trying to find Sykes. Bounces down the right of the penalty area and Sykes, forced out wide by Helder, plays it inside straight to Jack Clark. Clark away up to the halfway line, still going. Equine trying to, to roll it through here to Joe. Joe does get on the end of this. He's got support coming through with Rig. Joe shot, oh, parried time. away by the keeper. Clark puts oh, it in and it's saved save. again by the keeper. Oh, Excellent. And it's still not cleared and eventually it's played behind for a goal kick. Excellent save by the Two goalkeeper. Two good saves. O'Leary. And then you're thinking, should we have scored? Credit to the goalkeeper, he had to make the saves. Yeah, he did. So that's uh, several goal good opportunities. Ballard's header off the line. Clark O'Leary saving his 18-yard shot as he tried to place it in the 24th minute. And now that double save from Job and Clark. Very good. Say a second one, especially the reaction yeah. of. Yeah, and again, a, you know, it's easy said when we're up here, Nick. It was a nice height again, wasn't it, for him? It was. The wind's blown, blown. The, the ball's been blown off way off the six-yard line. 35th minute, nil-nil, and the ball blows back again, an inch or two. Then he kicks O'Leary down this right-hand side. It's going to bounce out, I think. Uh, it does, it's a throw to Sunderland inside their own half, down the left, and Yelda plays it back to Ballard. Ballard, just outside the penalty area, plays out of the shadows into the sunshine. Luke O'Neill, back to Patterson, short pass to Ballard. Ballard then out again wide to O'Neill on the right-hand side. Tries a long ball over the top again for Rick to chase, Pring gets in front of him. Takes it on his head, it comes out for a throw to Sunderland. Yeah, and you can feel that wind's going to get worse in it as time goes on. Seems to be building in strength. Here on halfway is Ballard, taps it to Equa. Equa in the centre circle, wide to Clark on the left-hand side looking for Joe with Neil Neil now outstretched foot headed over him onto the bar comes down to Joe again O'Leary has prevented Bristol City falling behind with that outstretched foot from Neil's shot how and it's come back to Job and he just couldn't control it could he couldn't get it just right And so what, they've used the pod of their lives, aren't they? Well, have, 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 they are at the moment. But you just hope that they're not going to be punished for it, Sunderland, by Bristol City going down the other end and scoring themselves. O'Leary, 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 O'Leary. <laughs> O'Deary, O'Deary, O'Deary. He's kept Bristol City in this first half, Max O'Leary. He must have made five or six great saves keep him in the game yes Hjelda trying to head the ball out to Clark overhead kick and Job looked like he was being manhandled but no, nothing from Lee Doughty the ball goes all the way back to the man of the moment Max O'Leary he's just pushed the ball outside the penalty area hangs in the air because he's caught in the wind drops to George Tanner how Sheesh tackles him now Sheesh opens up here for Hume down the right side down the right wing inside the Bristol City half. 
He looks up now and plays it through to Auschwitz, flicks it into the penalty area, but Pring will get on the end of it and puts it out for a throw down yeah. the right-hand side. It'd be good if we can take advantage of this wind. Oh, creeping towards half-time, now's the time to take it because, of course, it'll be in Bristol City's favour in the second half. Job at the edge of the penalty area again, gets it out to Rig. Rig, Pring and Mimetti goes to close him down, but he gets it into the box, but Hayden Roberts just lashes it away with his left foot and it goes out for a throw just inside the Bristol City half. O'Neill's going to leave it for Hume to take. Sunderland nil, Bristol City nil. As Hume, well, as oh. O'Neill's just caught, but the ball's come back strongly enough to Ballard and back to Patterson to kick clear of Wells up to the halfway line. And it's dropped for Sykes and Neil. Sykes wins it. James now to Knight. And Knight on the right side of midfield looking for the run of Sykes, but Hjeld is going to get there ahead of him and let the run ball run behind for a goal kick. 39th minute, nil, nil. Ballard places the ball on the six-yard line. Plays it to Patterson, who passes it back to Ballard. Ballard dribbling it out to the edge of the penalty area. Equa in the middle, back to Dan Ballard and across then to Luke O'Neill. And uh, O'Neill pausing for a moment, playing it back into the centre to Ballard, Ballard to Neil. Neil looks up, plays it back across to O'Neill. Down the right wing. Hume, Mimetti giving him chase. He pulls the ball back for Rig. Rig on the right wing with Hume. Hume plays it back again to O'Neill. Inside to Equa. Out to O'Neill again and back into the centre circle to. Dan Ballard, who plays it square to his left to Hjelda, and out again to the left to Clark in front of Mike Dodds on the touchline and pushing it through, looking for Job's run down the left of the Bristol City penalty area. He's laid it back off to Clark, Clark running at the defender, slips it through the legs of one to Equa, and he oh. slams it over the top from a narrow angle on the left side of the six yard box. Yeah, well worked. The defender will be furious for letting Clark play the ball through it's his legs, play. won't he? But yeah. what we have got, Nick, around that 18-yard box, you've got to say, we've got good movement now. So say, they're just the movement. little runs behind. Goal kick then for Bristol City in the 40th minute. Max O'Leary is placing the ball, hoping it stays where he's put it down in this strong wind. The players over on this near side, around halfway, down the right. It's headed off the back of uh, Tanner by Hjelda. Knight keeps it in, and then Hume hooks it oh. back behind him, and it's straight to a Bristol City player who finds Sykes. Sykes now in the penalty area, wins a corner off Ballard. Patterson went down, anticipating the ball was going to make it through to him. But it's a corner again to Bristol City in the 41st minute on the right-hand side at the Roker end. Nil-nil as we approach the interval, live here on BBC Radio Newcastle. Twine, again, will take the corner kick. Only one arm raised this time, the left arm, and he drops it again and comes in with his right foot near post. Ooh. Oh, it bounces through. Ooh. I think Jove and Sorry, Patterson what? a little bit shell-shot there because that could easily have crept in. Somehow it's bounced between the two of them and out to the far side and is cleared up to the halfway line. But that's a heart in your mouth moment for Sunderland from Twine's corner. The ball bounces again and Equa's trying to nod it on, nods it down the right hand side, tries to twist inside. Mametti gets the ball off him, slips slightly, allowing Hume to pick up the ball and find Rig. Rig on the halfway line, plays it across here to Hilda and he plays it out to Clark wide on the left inside the Bristol City half. He cuts inside, looking Good for the ball. run of Auschwitz, tries a little back oh. heel, but Hayden Roberts Lucky. whips it away, oh, Joe wins okay. it off him, finds Rig, Rig is pushed off the ball, and uh, then fouls oh, right. Oh, he's given the other way. And the free kick given to Bristol City. Rig penalised. When it looked like he'd been fouled initially, but yep. um, Lee Doughty's is gone the other way and having a word with Chris Rigg now. 
last four games have seen uh, Bristol win three. The other was a defeat at West Bromwich Albion. Prior to that, they'd lost uh, four on the bounce. To all the, uh, to two of the struggling teams and two teams whose form has been pretty good of late. <coughs> lost at home to Queen's Park Rangers, they lost at Sheffield Wednesday, lost at home to Cardiff in what's a derby effectively, and then lost narrowly to Ipswich Town, who lost today themselves to Norwich City. The ball played up to the halfway line, Job is beaten to it, Ballard has to head the ball clear. Neil brings it down, plays it back to Ballard, he tries to drive it up through the middle again for Job, but it's hooked away by Roberts. Neil heads it forwards again, now Sheesh. Uh, he's gone straight to Tanner as he tried to flick it past him. Looks Ooh. for Wells, taps it inside here to Twine. Twine now, the edge of the area, back to Tanner on the right. Flicks it to try and lose and shake off Aushish. Now finds Knight, back down the right for Tanner. Tanner's ball into the penalty area, he's headed out by Ballard. Straight to Hayden Roberts. Roberts down the left to Pring, then to Memeti. He's trying to bring it on his right foot and cross into the penalty area, but O'Neill hooks it out. Clark heads it on here, looking for Job, beaten in the air though by Viner, comes out to the right wing, Mimeti's out here now, tries to get it back to Viner, Viner now forwards to Mimeti, cut out, Gelder to Aushish, inside to Neil, forwards to Equa, and Equa now out to the left again to Aushish on halfway, he's way. tackled by Viner, Viner skips the challenge of Equa. Viner's taking this on, swinging it towards Wells, headed away though by O'Neill, and it'll go out for a throw on the far side. And we played 44 minutes, and it's Sunderland nil, Bristol City nil. Throw from Pring, back to Roberts. Roberts now trying to skip away from Job, tackled by Equa, drops for Pring on the left again, plays it back to Matty James. James to Tanner on the right side of the centre circle, out wide to Sykes. Sykes in this last minute of the 45, back to Tanner on halfway, forwards to Twine, back out to Sykes, lifting it up, looking for Mehmet or Wells, and Wells now looking for Pring in the penalty area on the left. He's uh, tried to cross, just headed away by Hume, and that takes it, carries it to Gelder. Played back down the right to the goal line, though, and Wells. And he's played it back, Twine trying to put it in, oh, but blocked on the line by O'Neill. Well done. And Patterson falls on the ball. <clears throat> so that's one each blocked on the line. There were one minute of added time. Ballard's header blocked, cleared off the line, and Twine's shot blocked on the line by O'Neill. And so it looks like we're going to head in at the interval goalless. We played uh, 20 seconds of that min minute. And the ball at the back with Bristol City. Roberts plays it back to Viner. Goes down by Clark, and then back it comes to Tanner on the right. Out to the touchline. Sykes back to Tanner and in the middle, Viner. Roberts, 15 seconds of the minute left. Pring on the left-hand side, plays it back to James. James in the middle of the Bristol City half. And uh, we will only get another few touches, I think, before Lee Doughty blows for half-time. The ball is swept behind by O'Neill for a, That's it, a corner, but they won't get a chance to take it. There's the half-time whistle. Much, much better from Sunderland yeah, this afternoon. So. Yeah. But for Max O'Leary, they could have been two or three up. Indeed, O'Leary has been excellent. In, you know, he's made four or five good saves. Um, we've played at a better tempo, good movement off the ball, which makes a huge, huge difference. Um, and the, you don't want to be critical, but you've got to say we should be going in at least one or two up. And you don't want to be in a position where you might be kicking yourself that we haven't made most of them opportunities. Yes, O'Leo has made saves, but you've just got to think back at them opportunities. We've, you've got to put one away. The, the word you're looking for is clinical, isn't yeah, it? They've, they've, yeah. they've got to be clinical in, in, in front well, of goal. Yeah, you, you, you're ruthless, haven't we? You know, yeah. and we haven't been doing that. Um, elsewhere this afternoon, I mean, not a lot of goals in the championship. Blackburn and Southampton's goalless. Cardiff are losing at home 2-0 to Hull. Coventry, surprisingly, at the moment, are beating Leeds 1-0. Huddersfield, Millwall, 0-0.
so that's the half time. Are you ready for some um, socials? Queen's Park Rangers and Sheffield Wednesday, big game towards the bottom, that's nil nil. Stoke losing at home to West Bromwich Albion is one nil. Watford and Preston is nil. Um, right, uh, an excellent half really. Feel like Rusen would have been ideal for this game. Should be 2 0 up at least, but best they have played in a long time. Um, loads better than Monday. Yeah. Sunderland died. Loads better than Monday, we need a goal though. Not a point in the obvious. Um, good first um, half, Miles better than Blackburn Rovers I mean, on Monday. Been quite yeah, impressed with Joe, Ushish, Ekwa and Neil. Yeah, just yeah, been the unlucky, game. their keeper is having the game of his life. I would say it's more we're just not good finishing good from clinical areas. Job should have buried a couple of chances there. He, he should have buried a couple of chances, Job. Like, I mean, Christ, any other decent striker would have busted the back of the net for that. Luke on nine must be Colombian because that man loves clearing the lines. <laughs> additional time as Kraft blocks off Williams' pass and Fulham win it back from Newcastle from Emil Kraft in midfield. Ending the first half as they've spent most of it defending. At least it's better than Monday, Dougie. Yeah, Bristol to do better in second half. Yeah. From the cross. Uh, better performance, but we need to step up a bit more. Neil Denby, cheers, Cavi. Your feed is much appreciated as I can't otherwise get the comment where I'm from. Welcome, Neil. You welcome it anytime. Roll to Robinson on the left. Back to halfway to Bassi. Not in a hurry, Fulham. It's walking football, isn't it? Bassi's got it again. I'm back, I'm back. We've just had some inside noise. Sam Allison. Nil, nil, John Anderson. Yeah, it hasn't been great. Fulham dominating the ball. He had a little, little spell. Not a great deal, great deal of chances from either side in the game either. There's been no real tempo to it. It's been pretty pedestrian, if we're perfectly honest. Uh, started the game, couldn't keep it, kept giving it away. It was really, really poor. I think so, some harsh words will be said in that dressing room at half time. Newcastle have also seen Joe Willock go off uh, with a knock. Elliot Anderson on as his replacement. Close twice through Anthony Gordon and through Alexander Isak, who just couldn't control a through ball at the edge of the area. But the majority of the attacking play has been from Fulham. Not the best first half from Eddie Howe's side. At half time here at Craven Cottage, it's Fulham nil, Newcastle United nil. In 1974, ABBA stunned Europe with this absolute classic. Oh, I mean, to be fair, a lot of other, a lot of people are now putting in the chat as well in social media is that it is a better performance. I mean, let's face it, couldn't get any worse, but it wouldn't take much to better that performance, would it? Pure perfection. They can write beautiful, really heartfelt ballads, which I love. Join us for the ultimate celebration. Tony Booker. I don't think I know we need to strike. Absolutely. The panic's in possession. FTM, the real. With me, really yucky spot. Total Sport North East BBC Radio Newcastle Dominic James back in the BBC Radio Newcastle studio at half time Fulham nil, Newcastle nil, Sunderland nil, Bristol City um, nil. Work to do yeah, for both yeah. of our sides well. in the second half. Our other commentary well, game well. is at the International Stadium, Gateshead versus Macclesfield in the semi finals of the well. FA well. Trophy. Colin White and Paul Dixon with full match commentary. Which is available via the BBC Sport website, and that one Colin can tell us how the first half has gone. It's been windy, Dom. That's the short answer to the question. But Gateshead lead by two goals to nil. As I talk to you, there are six volunteers trying to get the uh, the dugout, the mobile dugout, back upright because it's been blown over in the wind. It has been incredibly, incredibly gusty in this first half. Gateshead have had the wind behind them. They've had the advantage in the first half, which will make the second half very interesting. But as it stands, they lead by two goals to nil. Dejon Brown up front today has been terrific. He has nine goals in his last seven games. He's not scored either of the two, but he set them both up this oh, afternoon after just five minutes he got in behind uh, and did well to spin inside the box lay it off for Ben Warman who had started the move
move. He slotted it home. That was 1-0 after 5 minutes. It was 2-0 after 25 minutes when Brown got in behind. Should have done better, actually. Uh, the had a shot on goal that hit his standing foot, but he managed to keep possession. Again, spin and lay it off, and this time it was Callum Whelan who fired it home. Ed Francis has hit the post from a free kick as well. Macclesfield have offered very, very little in truth, but they have, and I keep mentioning it, been battling against a really strong wind. The ball goes up in the air and blows straight back where it came from. Or with Gateshead's balls forward, they've just been overhit because of the wind so often. So still really interesting second half to come, but Gateshead 45 minutes away from Wembley because they lead Macclesfield in this FA Trophy semi-final yeah, at halftime yeah. by two goals to nil. Colin, thank you very much. It's a reminder, you can listen to that one online via the BBC Sport website and app. Solihull Moors lead Bromley in the other semi-final by a goal to I'm nil. Nervous. Let's move, let's go through the other scores around. Should be two up really, Kevin. Oh, God, in yeah. The Premier League and early kickoff. Manchester this should City be. Beat Crystal Palace uh, itself, how for a leader and a bit of experience in this team, that's what we're massively missing. The goal just before the break, we need to put one of these chances away, yeah, because if we don't, it's going to bite us in the backside. Luton are goalless with Bournemouth at Kenilworth Road, and Wolves leave West Ham by a goal to nil. The late kickoff in the Premier League this afternoon is at 5 30, and it's Brighton versus Arsenal. Total Sport North East on the station with Newcastle and Sun. And commentary exclusively live. BBC Radio Newcastle. Into the championship then in the in the early kickoff, Norwich beat Ipswich 1-0 to the three o'clock. We win all but safe and lose. We're in a dog fight. The thing is though, David, I think everybody has to play each other. At the bottom half. In the bottom three, whatever so I don't think they can catch us. It's just not confirmed yet that they can. City Middlesbrough leads Swansea by a goal to nil. Goal is between QPR and Sheffield Wednesday. West Brom 1-0 up away to Stoke. Goal is, as we already know, between Sunderland and Bristol City. And the only other game in the Championship today is Watford versus Preston. That is also goalless. This is two teams. That's sport. This is two teams. That's just simply got no good player for, isn't it? I mean, as you said, it's obvious. Blackburn were wanting it more. It's, it's just two teams on holiday more, isn't it? Bristol lead Cambridge one nil. Goalless between Bristol Rovers and Bolton. There, Oxford lead Burton Albion by a goal to nil. Charlton two one up over Barnsley, Exeter 1, Stevenage 0, Leighton Orient 2, Charlton 0, Northampton Town lead Carlisle 1 nil. the break, Portsmouth lead Shrewsbury Town 2 1. If we aren't going down then screw it, but we do need to inspire a decent manager to come in, I think we can go for top 6 next season. Not seeing that at the moment, oh no, of course it was a long way off that yet. Into League 2, Accurate and Stanley, crew as goalless as is, AFC Wimbledon, a Salford Swindon lead Barrow by two goals to nil. Bradford City lead Gillingham 1-0. Uh, goalless between uh, Colchester United and Wrexham. MK Dons managed by Mike Williamson lead Forest Green Rovers by a goal to nil. Grimsby 1-0 up over Newport County. Crawley Town lead Mansfield Town 2-0. Doncaster away to Morecambe also 2-0 up. Notts County lead Harrogate by a goal to nil. Stockwell County 3-1 up away to Sutton and the only other game in League 2 is Tranmere versus Walsall. That's 1-1 at the break. Total Sport North East. Get the latest team news, score updates and post-match reaction on Twitter at BBC Newcastle. BBC Radio Newcastle. Non-league wise at the South. Let's hope we can do this for long suffering fans says David. Don't be, hopefully we don't continue to bring in the kids in off-season. Oh, we can't, we can't. In National League North couple of big games for our side Blythe Spartans um, just to let you know I'll be doing a new thing every Monday I'll be doing a live stream um, a bit of chat a bit of banter and there's a guy coming to join me called Davey and um, he often phones in Radio Newcastle he was in Radio Newcastle and the guy's a legend he's quality so I'll be streaming at 8 o'clock on Monday night um, so you're all welcome if anybody's not doing anything to join me at 8 o'clock on Monday for that um, for a bit of a <coughs> throw as much questions to us as you want and uh, we'll try our best to answer them all um, keep the faith that's why I say it's like a marriage you have to work hard at it David says I would say after this season we are the most loyal fans absolutely due to all the the wet weather we've had of late. Uh, 
Ashington, they are away to Carlton this afternoon. That one is currently still goalless there. A concert, they yeah. are uh, they're away to Grantham this afternoon. This, according to management, to the team in, was in good in enough to challenge for top two spot. Yeah, right. Half down, it's goalless and heartbreaking. In the Scottish Lowland League, mm -hmm. uh, Berwick Rangers are at home to the Lithgow Rose, but trail by two goals to nil at half time. A local football roundup will be at 5.45 this evening. Matt Bailey at breakfast. You know me, Colette. Yep. I've always You're got welcome, my David on the pulse of cool music. <laughs> and the latest, <laughs> what are you laughing for? The latest big DJ in dance music is a guy called Lenny Pierce, and he's making his name by remixing nursery rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, wheels on the bus, absolute banger. What about if you're happy and you know what's going on? If anybody wants to join me on the chat on Cam Live, if anybody wants to join me on just audio only, just uh, just let us know on the chat. You're welcome to join. Matt Bailey at breakfast. Back Monday morning from six. How then are we seeing winning this and we're here from relegation? I just think the fans, you just want to see your team win, Stephen, don't you? We just want the fans to. We just want to feel better. It's, you feel better when your team wins. But again, there was no play. Even when you've got out to play for you, it's, it's good when your team your team wins, isn't it? Um, Dougie Stewart, look, what are you doing, mate? Um, did the same many years ago under Alan Durbin with the youngsters, but also had that experience as well. But you think it's a bit hard that experience, and that's where it's missing. Marcus Mormons, greetings from greetings, Matt and Cabby. And are you dreaming? How are you doing, mate? Are you okay? Any rain overnight, but the ground staff say the water table is um, low. 87, hello, mate. It seems we currently months. need three so points. Lose and playoffs are off. It seems it's 23. He's going to be playing this class in a year or two. Well, yeah, absolutely. The two opening days of a season. He Prior certainly this, knows where the goal is. One here in 1996 against North Hans. That was on May the 2nd, though. And they also lost mm. day one against Worcestershire in 1999. That was on April the 13th. Martin Emerson, BBC Radio Newcastle's cricket commentator. Hopefully, we'll get right. some play tomorrow. So, if anybody would like uh, wants to join me as a guest on, time on Monday we'll night, on the, um, we'll be doing the show at eight o'clock till nine. We'll have ball by just ball put us a, a comment on the chat if you want to join us. Website and app. We're just going to split our frequencies <sighs> again as we Newcastle well. finished slightly later in the at half time. So, we're going to head back now to the Stadium of Light for second half. Commentary yeah. if you're listening on DB Digital Radio Preview Channel 71. Nick Barnes and Gary Bennett will be with you in just a second. Total Sport Northeast. Nick Barnes and Gary Bennett MBE. BBC Radio Newcastle. Well, welcome back to the Stadium of Light, and perhaps we should rename it today the S International Stadium because it's International Fans Day. Right. Just not? take the steel. The name from Gateshead for an afternoon. Uh, here international in the, weather. It, it, it is international weather here, and the wind is as strong at Gateshead as it is here. And interestingly, now, clearly, um, as way? Bristol City yeah. head out for the second half, Sunderland electing to defend the Roker end in the first half because of the wind uh, uh, didn't uh, take uh, advantage of it. Yeah. Yes, yes. But Sims and Broadhead as a front two. Stephen. They're going to make a substitution. We could have easily had that ourselves, you know. Night call music worldwide. Rig will score and see in one nil win. Yeah, fancy Rig actually. And now we Sunderland. If I was scouting your club, I'd give you Langstaff. I think he's up and coming. Yeah, we. I think we tried again for him before. The CFC Dreamers, how are you doing, mate? What's the performance like? It's a lot better um, than what it was against Blackburn. We just lack that firepower, mate. Can't see Cameron Pring yes, Dad. Um, I'm going to be doing a show on Monday, um, where it's just, just uh, a live watch along. Um, we're going to just having a big chat, have a banter about our yeah. season so far and today's match. Um, it's going to be a new feature every Monday. Um, Eight till nine, and I've got a guest coming who often phones Radio Fine Newcastle. He's called David, and he's absolute it's quality. He's, he's, he's no really good. He often phones the station. Um, if anybody James? wants to join me on the chat, or wants to join us as a guest to come on the channel, just James let us know. Is still, James is still there. Still there. Hi, mate. What's the subs? <laughs> Do you know, I think it might be a uh, 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 uh. 
It's subs of Bishop, Pembele, Lewis Hemea, Burstow, Mundle, Styles, Alessi, Dak, and Roberts. They are the subs, mate. So it's enough from me now, it's time to shut the trap as the second half gets underway. Liam Manning for the second half and six foot three Ross McCrory signed from Aberdeen in the summer is going to be Mimeti's replacement. So Bristol City now with the wind behind them clearly a tactic that Sunderland tried to take advantage of in the first half but Max O'Leary denied them on a number of occasions um, and now they've got to hope that, that uh, those saves by O'Leary aren't costly in this second 45 minutes. Bristol City in uh, basically all black as uh, Scott Twine and Chris Rigg have a, a jovial, jocular conversation on the halfway line while they wait for the referee to get the second half underway. Dan Neal does so, pushes the ball back to Luke O'Neill, who sweeps a long ball down the left wing, well over the head of Joe, who slams George Tanner in the back. And uh, the referee's come across for a word. I'm not sure what went on between the two to induce Job to do that, but he's being spoken to by Lee Doughty now, who's in a turquoise top. The Bristol City keeper, Max O'Leary's all in a darker turquoise. And it's a throw to Bristol City on their right-hand side. They are defending the Roker end in this second 45. Sunderland, of course, in their red and white stripes. The ball hooked on by Sunderland through the middle. It just falls behind Chris Rigg. We tried to get on the end of it, but in the end it's tidied up by Matty James. Back to the goalkeeper. And a hefty kick from him. Look where the ball has yeah, Takes too. it all the way. The wind's pushed it all the way up into the corner on the left-hand side. And uh, O'Neill's to come back all the way to get that on the Sunderland right and try and drive it into the wind to try and find Joe. It's headed out on this left-hand side by Hayden Roberts. So a throw to Sunderland, halfway inside the Bristol City half, almost on the right, which Hume will take. He's, he's got support through Rig or Job or Equa now drops in and then backs down the touchline. It goes to Rig inside, it came off him and is cleared by Pring. Cameron Pring all the way back up to Anthony Patterson, who grabs it with one outstretched hand and rolls it out then to Luke O'Neill and down the line to... Trey Hume, Hume back to O'Neill, across then to Ballard. You can see the wind again blowing that corner flag in the northeast corner almost to the floor. There's a kick. Oh, that's oh a that foul. was that a foul, a foul on Clark. Play goes on. Ball comes back to O'Leary, and the referee just told Jack Clark to get up. Mm. He's done a lot of that, hasn't he? Referee. Yes. Just get on with it. Yeah. Sunderland, Patterson in goal, Hume, Ballard, O'Neill, and Hjelder. Neil Equa, Rig, Oshish, Clark, and Job. And Bristol City, O'Leary in goal. Back for Tanner, Viner, Roberts, and Pring. Midfield of Sykes, Knight, James, now McCrory. Twine playing behind Naki Wells. And here is Twine through the middle. Pring coming up on the outside here into the area on his left. Tries to clip it in, but it floats into the hands of Anthony Patterson who rolls it out to Neil and quickly out on the left to Oshish and down the left touchline to Clark. Clark, oh, he's clipped, but he's got the advantage from the referee and he's cut, cut away into the middle and then out to the right-hand side to Rig. Rig having to come back to halfway, pushed out by Pring, plays it back to O'Neill. O'Neill then to Ballard, Ballard to Hjelda, Hjelda back inside to Dan Ballard. Ballard in the middle of the Sunderland half and the one half of the pitch which is in sunshine and here in the shade on the west side is Hume to Neil back to O'Neill across again to the sunny side of the pitch and bringing it forward is Hjelda driving it onto Job tackled the loose ball picked up by Edgar who's tugged back by Twine but again the referees played the advantage Hume looked to try and find Clark, who was offside, checked his run, and the ball sails over his head and goes out for a Bristol City throw. Nil-nil, 49th minute. 
It's now Gateshead 2, Macclesfield 1 in the FA Trophy. Macclesfield pulling the goal back in the second half. Throw then for Bristol City. Tanner, George Tanner, the right back, takes this down the line. It's uh, headed back from halfway by Naki Wells, then uh, back to the goalkeeper. Joe picks himself off the deck, after slipping down. Bring brought out by Roberts here, up to the halfway line to Twine, out to Pring on the left-hand side. Pring back to Roberts, show too much of it then to Rigg. Rigg gets the ball back from Job. Job away down this right-hand side. He's still wide, tries to flick the ball inside the penalty area to Job, but it's uh, cleared by Bristol City. Out for a throw to Sunderland on the right-hand side. Nil-nil, 50th minute here at the Stadium of Light. Here in the middle, Mark Sykes. Sykes looked for McCrory, it's run away from him. Out for a throw again to Sunderland on the left, just inside the Sunderland half. Yelda takes it back to Ballard. Ballard, short pass in the middle to O'Neill, and then out to the right, Hume. Hume closed down by Pring, looking for Job. Hooked away, though, by Hayden Roberts. Banged away, back up into the Bristol City half touch, to, to Job touch. by Hume. Great He's touch. brought it down well, Job, and finds Neil in the centre circle. Some good play. Out to Hjelda. Back inside to Neil. Hjelda again. Gives the ball away, though, to McCrory. Then it's played forwards. Mm. They're looking for Naki Wells. Cut out by Ballard. Neil had been through. He hadn't cut that out. Ballard and now out on the left hand side. Pring. He's got uh, Hayden Roberts just behind him. Inside of him is Matty James. James now to Jason Knight. Gives the ball away to Hume. Inside to Neil. Forwards to Equa. Into the centre circle. Oh, sheesh. But oh. Matty James rolls it off his feet. Finds McCrory. And McCrory plays it back to Tanner and then to Viner. He plays it up to the halfway line. Scott Twine managed to flick it on, but straight to Luke O'Neill. And now to Equa again. And Pierre Equa swings a lovely ball. ball out to Jack Clark on the left wing. Clark now dribbling at McCrory at the edge of the penalty area, trying to get in on his right foot. Pushed away out to Dan Neal. Curls one round the post from just outside the penalty area. 0 0, 52nd minute. Live here on BBC Radio Newcastle. Ball back with Max O'Leary, qualifies to play for the Republic of Ireland. But, uh, born in Bath, just a few miles outside Bristol. Well done. And the ball shuffled out for a throw to Bristol City inside the Sunderland half on the left. Left for Cameron Pring to take. Back it goes to Zach Viner. Inside a few yards, George Tanner. Out to the left again, Hayden Roberts. Forwards to Matty James, looking through the middle here to Sykes. And Sykes out to McCrory on the right wing. Taking this down the right, swinging the ball into the penalty area. Headed away by Ballard. Out to Aushish. Aushish in the middle of the Sunderland half, Equa. Then he plays it to Neil. Neil spins around Mark Sykes, plays it back to Luke O'Neill, and out to Chris Rigg, wide on the right, back to Hume, Hume back to Patterson, passes it to Ballard, Naki Wells behind him, wide to Hjelda, driven straight at George Tanner on the halfway line, inside to Viner, back to the goalkeeper, passes it out in front of Job to Viner again. Viner back to O'Leary. O'Leary, longer this time up towards the halfway line, and it's flicked out for a throw to Bristol City on halfway on the left in the 54th minute. It's still nil nil. Yeah, I, I thought they might be doing Roberts must be going to come on. He'll come on for Ashish. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Just a little bit of wizardry behind Joe. Yeah. Pring back to Roberts inside to Viner. And uh, 
Patrick Roberts currently getting instruction from Alessandro Baccarini, the goalkeeping coach, on his tablet. Here's Equa rolling it out to Hjelder on the far side. Now with Equa again in the middle, just inside the Bristol City half, finding Rig in the middle, back to Equa. Oh, he lifted it out over the top of uh, Scott Twine, but out also over Hume's head for a throw to Bristol City on this left-hand side. Cameron Pring will take the throw down the left wing. O'Neill getting in front of Wells, gets it to Hume, passes it away from Twine to Ballard, and Ballard across to Hjelder on the far side. And uh, Hjelder... I'm not sure if that's not Dak, actually, who's going to come on. Is that Roberts or Dak? I think it might be Dak. It might be Dak. And uh, free kick here on the uh, the left for Bristol City for an offside. Taken by the uh, the goalkeeper up to. Mark Sykes is immediately closed down by Dan Ballard, who fouls Sykes. Unnecessarily, in my view, because I don't think he's really... Was there any real danger over on that far side? There's a free kick to Bristol City, four or five yards in from touch, halfway inside the Sunderland half on the, on the right-hand side. Again, Scott Twine, who's taken all Bristol City's set pieces, is going to take this free kick. And uh, Sunderland holding their line up 18 yards. Two arms in the air from Scott Twine. And Sunderland's substitution is uh, imminent. Here's the free kick from Bristol City. Floats up to Hayden oh. Roberts, comes down here oh. and through a huddle of bodies straight at Patterson who catches it it might be um, Styles coming on so it's still nil nil we're in the 57th minute Sunderland about to make their first change and the fourth official is about to show us he's got the ball down by his side the ball is back with Ballard across here to O'Neill and O'Neill short pass forwards to Neil back to Patterson again in his yellow and he kicks this up through the middle and Sheesh was hauled down by Tanner free kick in the centre circle for Sunderland Ekro and Neil I think it is Dak isn't it who, of course, it came on and had an impact in the game against Blackburn by setting up the goal for Chris Rigg. We're approaching the hour mark, not far short of it. Clark cutting inside in the middle of the Bristol City half, out to O'Neill. Forwards down the right to Chris Rigg, tried to get it on, forwards past Pring, but won back by Bristol City. Pring gets it forwards, Ballard hammers it at Equa, it came off his arm but completely accidental Equa now trying to spin off it again he gets a foot to it, it's in the air and Pring heads it down and out for a throw to Sunderland on the right hand side and Dak now is going to come on for Sunderland as you say for our sheesh we're in the 59th minute Oh, sheesh, I'm lucky not to score yeah, in the first he's, half. He started off brightly. He's just lost his way a little yeah. bit, struggling to get back into the game. He's uh, applauded off to his confidence, the world of good. And Dak, half an hour to weave some magic. Comes up to play just behind Job, and the throw then on the... Right-hand side here taken by Hume to Equa, but one back by Twine. Equa's challenged Twine a bit too strongly for lead out. He's free kick to Bristol City. Um, 
Bradley Dax already got some paper wrapped around his ankle. It blows off and back up into the Sunderland half. The ball back with Viner across to Tanner. And Tanner now plays it back to the goalkeeper. Out to Hayden Roberts, closed down by Rigg. Roberts forwards to Pring. Pring on the left, sweeps it up to Twine. Twine slips it inside here to oh, Wells football. on the halfway line. They've got a runner here with McCrory on the right-hand side. He's got Sykes through the middle. Wells running into the penalty area. McCrory coming across the back of the box to James. James, closed down by Rigg, is forced back. Plays it back here to Roberts, down the left again to Pring. And Pring inside to James. Dat goes to close him down. Through the middle, it comes back out to Twine. Twine to Wells at the edge of the area, blocked by Equin and cleared as the ball crept into the penalty area. Comes back out again to Sykes, who drives it wide, well wide, for a goal kick to Sunderland. You've got to say they played their way out well there, didn't they, Bristol? Yeah. It's almost, the honest, um, we've levelled this accusation at Sunderland so many times, they've overplayed it, Bristol mm. City. They're almost trying to walk it into the net. Yeah. Nil-nil. The 61st minute, alive on BBC Radio Newcastle. Ball back with Patterson. Out to O'Neill. Swings one up through the middle, but it'll be headed away from Job. Hume heads it on to Job, who flicks it back down to Hume, but plays it back behind Dak. And Tanner's able to run onto it and bring it out over the halfway line, looking for Sykes, but passing it to Ballard, who got in front of Sykes and now finds Clark down the left Clark, side. Clark. He's cutting in here to the edge of the penalty area. Clark's still Need going, help. trying oh, to it's... slip it inside to Job. Cut out, though, by Pring. And he's given the ball away again to Clark. Clark onto his right foot, shoots low, it's fallen behind Dak and then cleared by Jason Knight. Out to Twine here, and Twine chased by Rigg, up through the middle to Naki Wells. Wells is brought oh. down by Hume. Hume. Taking one for the team He's now. He's going to get a yellow, yellow card. card. First yellow of the game. <coughs> Shown to Trey Hume in the 62nd minute. Free kick in the centre circle for Bristol City. Played back to Viner, out to the left to Roberts. Roberts flicks up off the ankles of Rigg, comes back through to Ballard. Ballard, Wells went to close him down, finds Kjelda. Kjelda back to Ballard and Ballard back again to O'Leary uh, to Patterson who's driven this up towards Job who gets well on his done. chest brings it down for Dak plays it away down the right hand side Job comes across for this he's uh, got to try and shake off Roberts and Job now he's got Hume behind him Hume looks to try and get the ball into the middle Equa Equa now just lays it off to Hjelda Hjelda to Clark, Clark coming back inside into the middle, rolls it in, looking for Job at the edge of the penalty area, Bristol City get it clear again. And here's O'Neill down the right for Hume, Hume back to O'Neill on the halfway line, swings it down the right, looking for Hjelda, is offside. offside. And a free kick to Bristol City, I'm not going to hopefully tempt fate, but this game has seemingly got nil-nil written over it, all over it, hasn't it? Yeah. I think they'll um, introduce Roberts on the right hand side, maybe just to maybe just give us that little bit of impact, freshen things up. Well, he's warming up at the moment with uh, Bursto and Elise. Goalkeeper Max O'Leary's come out to take the free kick for Bristol City. All the players, pretty much, yes, everyone's in the shade here on this west side of the pitch. And the kick driven down the left. Equa gets his head on it, hangs for a moment before Roberts heads it on. Ballard nods it down. Jason Knight tries to head it through for McCrory, who's given a good chase, and keeps it in on the far side. And now he gets in front of Hjelda. Hjelda is trying to get in front of 
him, Knight, and then uh, McCrory, and eventually it's passed out by Knight for a throw to Sunderland. The game's gone flat, Nick. It has, and Bristol City are going to make changes as well. But, um, Joe Williams is certainly one of them. He might be the only one that's definitely going to make a change, though. Bristol City bring on the former Everton Wigan midfielders. The ball cut out by James, drops for Dak. Dak now wide on the left, down the line oh. for Clark, goes out. We're losing our weight. <coughs> I think it's a double switch. They also are going to bring on Tommy Conway, who scored the penalty that yep. scored the victory. And Roberts is coming on for Sunderland. <laughs> Wells is coming off for Conway. That's a straight swap up front. And Joseph Williams, is it? well, Joe Williams, it is. Is going to come on as well. Double Mondal's coming on. And uh, indeed, yeah. Is it Mondal? No, it's Elise. Um, Sykes is the other player coming off for Bristol City. So Roberts and Elise coming on. for Sunderland in a bid to try and lift this game now which is drifted into a bit of ennui here we go Joe the elders coming off Rick, would it? and Rig you think and, and you Just think Rick. it would be Rig and Saji comes on a big round of applause and Rig, yes, is the other player. It's worked hard this afternoon, Rig. Yeah. Gets a word from Mike Dodds, shake of the hand from Michael Proctor and Alessandro Bartolini. And it's going to be a throw to Bristol City. With the change is now made for both teams. Yelda's walking off around the pitch, around the back of the goal at the north end of the stadium. It's Sunderland nil, Bristol City nil in the 67th minute. And another throw for Bristol City. Drops to Williams, the substitute. And Tanner brings it back inside now and plays it all the way back into his own half to Viner on the right, and back into the middle to the goalkeeper. O'Leary, who's outside his penalty area, and he's driven the ball down the left, looking for Twine's run. Bounces away from Ooh, him and a chase for him, <laughs> and he can't keep it in. Gets his foot on it in the end, but from behind the goal line, there's a goal kick to Sunderland. Fjelda eventually making it back round towards the Sunderland dugout. You hear that wind roaring again above us. And the ball played out to Elise, wide on the left. Mike Dodd shaking the hand of... Ooh. Kjelder is a foul there, no, says the referee on uh, Dak, who picks himself up. Ball goes out for another throw to Bristol City. And Tanner down to take it. Halfway inside the Sunderland half. Drops to Williams, short. Williams trying to get away from Dak, plays it inside to James. James back over the halfway line to Viner, back to Max O'Leary again, who's out in midfield for Bristol City in his turquoise, and he swings the ball out wide, looking for McCrory, up off his head, brings it down on the touchline, Elise manages to hook it away, straight to Williams, though, and Neil trying to get in front of Joe Williams, and they tangle, they both get up quickly, the, uh, Elise's on his knees, and still he's battling, and down goes Neil, and eventually well the referee gives a free kick to Sunderland. Quickly taken, Ballard out to Hume, Hume now, Roberts calling for it, here he gets it on the right-hand side, just short of the halfway line to Hume, back to Patrick Roberts, Roberts now trying to thread no. it through to Joe, but cut out by Viner, through here in the middle, good it's a good tackle by Neil, he's now going to try and tackle again, Roberts gets a touch to it, but it breaks for Pring, Pring on the left, pushes it back behind him to Hayden Roberts, Hayden Roberts back again, to the goalkeeper, and O'Leary 
inside his penalty area, passes out to Viner on the right, through to Williams, back to Viner. Viner turns away from Job, plays it back to the keeper to kick all the way down the right, out for a throw to Sunderland, just back inside their own half. 20 minutes or so left. It's still nil-nil, and we've not really had a chance in the second half to note. Here in the wind on the roof again, the ball bounces through the centre circle, comes back to Pring, forwards down the left here, Hayden Roberts trying to get it away from Hume. Roberts trying to get on the end of it, Patrick Roberts. Oh, that's a He's foul. He's definitely fouled foul. by Hayden Roberts. The referee pulls it back after initially playing the advantage. Roberts on Roberts. And Hayden Roberts is going to be shown a yellow card. Lee Doughty's patience running out. Well, Bristol City won 1-0 at Ashton Gate, Tommy Conway from the penalty spot. Mike Dodds would love to win this afternoon. It would be quite satisfying, I suspect, to win it 1-0. But it's 0-0 at the moment, and there's little sign still of either side really carving anything open. They're both effectively cancelling each other out at the moment. Ball comes back to O'Leary out wide McCrory keeps it in on halfway but it bounces in front of Elise who holds off McCrory is won a free kick Elise fouled well by the Scotsman former Rangers man taken and back to Ballard inside to O'Neill out to Hume on this right hand side Hume Twine pushing him back back to O'Neill O'Neill now trying to shake off Twine in the penalty area, lays it back off to Patterson. He kicks it out wide, looking for Elise, heads it on here. Good header. And uh, Clark has been very, very quiet in the second half, trying to flick it on over the head of the defender, slips in the middle but recovers, still has the ball, is in the centre, oh. takes a deflection off the boot of a Bristol City player but still gets through to Roberts. Roberts passes a lovely ball through to Dag, Dag blocked by Viner, it's a corner. Well done. That's the first time we've seen a ball played behind. Yeah, a bit of intelligent play, yeah. and they got Good through behind by Bristol Dak. City. Dak wins the corner. Roberts is going to take it, plays it back to Dan Neal, just outside the penalty area. He curls it towards the far oh. post, but over everybody's heads. And behind for a goal kick. And we're struggling to play the conditions, aren't we? Yeah, you look at this wind blowing yeah. everything around the pitch again. The rubbish on the pitch is swirling all over and the ball driven straight out to Dan Neal 73rd minute here's Roberts now down the right slips the ball inside to Neal Neal back out to Roberts on the right wing he's gonna tie and take on Pring Roberts running at him into the penalty area tries to pass it inside but too many black shirts around and they managed to block it and get it clear Bristol City swung back in again by Hume lovely header oh, off the other side of the bar he's at the cross Bradley bar. Dack threw himself at it and it smashed his header off the underside of the bar. It didn't go over the line, and the keeper has gratefully grabbed it. It's not meant to be, is it? No. Not meant to be. Six yards out. Again. Again. You've yeah. got to say, he should have scored. Well, he looked at him going flying in. You thought, here it is, this is the opener, but it's spectacular powerful header smashed off the underside of the bar landed a foot the wrong side of the goal line and eventually Viner uh, O'Leary grateful to uh, to fall on the loose ball so it's still nil nil Dak I don't think can believe his his luck his throw from Sunderland long one down the left wing from Elise it still hasn't gone out eventually does Viner will grab it and um, lead the throw for Tanner to take. The referee pushing George Tanner back a few yards. 
goalless here at the Stadium of Light, live on BBC Radio Newcastle. We're back on Tuesday at Ellen Road, live football, Leeds United, the opponents, of course. Total Sport back on Monday evening, Colin White with John Anderson and Marco Gabbiadini as a ball picked up a Pring here in the middle of the Sunderland half. He He's still it, running. He's going to lay it off now to Knight in the penalty area. Knight comes back out and then slips it to Twine. Twine has got Ekwa in front of him. Ekwa oh, tackles him. Comes out with this. No. Looking for Joe, but passed it straight to Roberts. Hayden Roberts now, who's tackled by Patrick Roberts. And a throw to Bristol City on the left-hand side. A free kick, in fact. Foul by Patrick Roberts on his namesake. It's played inside to Williams. Joe Williams back to George Tanner. Tanner out wide to McCrory. McCrory back to Williams on halfway. And nearly caught by Dak. James, Williams and now McCrory on the right-hand side. It's chipped on, looking for the run of Knight. One appears, one appears. Yeah, O'Neill cuts across the face of him with Ballard getting in front of Knight. Cleared up to Tanner on the halfway line, but lost to Clark. Clark now through the middle. He's got runner here with Roberts on Blame the line. Him. He's still going, Clark. Clark to the edge of the area, slipped it through to Job. Job oh. now trying to get oh, it on his right foot. It. What are you doing? Trying to get it on his left foot, crashes oh. against the keeper. His shot behind for a corner. Opportunity had gone. Another opportunity. O'Leary again. Saved with his foot. That coming in the 76th minute. Here's the corner from the left from Dax. Swings in here. Lost by the keeper, he's on the floor at the moment, but it'll be swept out by Pring. And uh, Equa's gone with him. Chase back here, Pring's still going, but Hume comes through and he's put the ball down the tunnel. Late right to the right in the corner. Newcastle have scored at Fulham, Fulham nil, Newcastle one. Late goal for Newcastle. Can Sunderland find a late goal here at home against Bristol City? You should have scored. Should they've have had, they've had they've four, had five goals good this opportunities. afternoon. And they're going to make another change. They're going to bring on Harry Cornick, the former Bournemouth striker, in a bid to try and win the game late. Bristol City. He comes out, and Cornick will replace Twine. Twine is well, looking shocked, and I'm not sure about that. Something else rather than the substitution. Scott, Scott Twine being replaced in the 77th minute by Harry Cornick. It's nil-nil. We're live on BBC Radio Newcastle. Benno will be here with the uh, the phone in after five. I'm sure you'd love to ring him. Express your opinion. Is the ball hooked on by Hume? And uh, the WhatsApp number if you want to phone is 08000. Treble three three two one. The text number. Put BBC in front of your message eight one. Treble three. Likewise, you can send a message on WhatsApp by send putting a BBC at the front of your message. Oh eight thousand three 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 two one. Binging it up here for you, Benno. <laughs> Done my homework. Remembered a couple of numbers. Yes. It's a ball kept in by Elise on the left well. wing inside yeah. the Bristol City half, looking for the run of Job down the left. He's done right. well to turn Viner. Viner's sticking with him, Job still out. got the ball. Good. Behind him now is Clark, cutting into the centre, laying it off to Equa. Equa just to the right of the centre circle, forced to Hume here on the right, and back again to O'Neill on the halfway line, and then to Neil on the left wing inside the Bristol City half. In the middle is Clark on the left of central midfield, and he's looking for an option, plays it back to O'Neill on halfway, to Hume, closed down by Cornick, back to O'Neill, now to Ballard, and Ballard pushing it down the left wing to Elise, Elise back to Dan Ballard and back to Patterson. Closed down by Tommy Conway, kicks clear Patterson, 
onto the head of Tanner on the halfway line. Drops eventually for James. Stumbles slightly but recovers. Then Dax slips over. The ball played out to McCrory on the right wing by Bristol City. Back past Tanner. And Tanner plays it back to Viner. Cross to O'Leary, the keeper, who comes out of the goalkeeper's area and kicks up through the middle. Ballard hooks it over the head of Cornick. Drops to Hume. Hume, Pring gets the ball away, oh, though, tonight. They've got a two. player over here. Pring in the penalty area on the left-hand side. Pulls it across the top of the net and behind for a goal kick. That's a tired cross from Pring. But they were in there, Bristol City. VAR has been doing its stuff at Craven Cottage. And Newcastle's goal has been disallowed against Fulham, so it's still nil-nil at Craven Cottage. Pring has got cramp, which is sort of explains why his cross was as poor as it was. O'Neill is helping out Cameron Pring at the moment, but uh, another Bristol City player has taken over that duty. I think McCrory it is. Maybe not. Anyway, the referees come down. Uh, with Pring right on the goal line, take him off, yeah, yeah, and then, then gets up and walks back on, much to the ire of the Sunderland fans. A lot of Sunderland fans looking down at the Rokeren heading off. Now looking around the stadium, yeah, a few more leaving, perhaps sensing that nil-nil is the inevitable outcome of this game. We're in the 81st minute, and uh, Ballard out through the middle to Equa, Equa. Across to Elise, down the line to Clark, back to uh, Dan Ballard just outside the penalty area. Ballard to Elise, back again to Ballard. Elise and uh, forwards then to Dak, Dak to Elise, Elise making the break. He's got Clark on the left wing, just inside the Bristol City half, looking for the run of Job. But Viner gets in front of him twists away to the right-hand side and plays it up through the middle to Joe Williams, who leaves it to be played through by James to Cornick and then back to Hayden Roberts looking for the run of McCrory. Elise heads it back to Patterson. Out to O'Neill and now to Hume. Hume, Cornick in front of him, cuts inside into Equa. Equa across in the sunshine to Dan Neal. Neil forwards to Elise. Back to Neil. Equa again. Returns the ball to Neil. Looking Good for ball. the Getting the ball. Pass through to Clark. To the edge of the penalty area. Into the penalty area. Clark still going. Tackled by Tanner. Clark gets back on the ball. Inside the area. Still low ball in. Viner hooks it away. And Dan Neil will pick it up and play it back into Dink Clark. It. Back inside. Looking for Dak. And somehow. Williams digs it out, gets it clear, up to Equa, nods it down to Ballard. Ballard slips it through to Neil. Neil now through into the penalty area. Dak leaning into the defender. Clark finds Clark on the left of the six-yard box. Tanner sticking with him. It's laid off to Elise. Inside to Equa. Equa oh. pushes it in front of him too much, and Tanner managed to hack it away. And back down the left again to Clark. McCrory closes him down. Back to Ballard. On the left, in the middle, now is Equa. Equa plays it back to Hume, just in front of the centre circle, out wide to Patrick Roberts. Roberts now dribbling down towards the corner of the penalty area on the right, leaves it for Job. Job comes back out, taps it back to Patrick Roberts, who plays it down the right of the penalty area again for Job to cross, headed away by Roberts, Hayden oh. Roberts, hooked in the air by Williams, and out with this bounce for a throw. Cornick, an overhead kick, keeps it in. Comes back up to Hume, nods it down to O'Neill, lashes it into the centre. Neil back to Ballard in the centre circle. Now to Hume on the right, on the halfway line. Wide is Patrick Roberts, and Hume plays it back to Luke O'Neill. Nil-nil in the 84th minute. Ballard. Newcastle have scored at Fulham. Uh, dependent on, I guess, on VAR again. Here's Roberts cutting well in done. Pring, past Pring, and into the middle of the Bristol City half, then to 
Elise just taps it back in the middle to Equa, through to Clark, little tap to Neil, trying to get the ball through, headed out from the edge oh. of the area by Hayden Roberts. And then Ballard pushing it back on again to Elise. Elise back to Equa. Equa now looking to try and find a way through. He's in the middle. It's just black shirts lined up in front of him. Slips it through to Dan Neal at the edge of the area, but Jason Knight gets the ball off him. And Knight out wide, swings it up through the middle, looking for Cornick. Comes off Hume down to Joe Williams. Williams trying to go around Equa. Lifts it over the top. It'd be a big ask of Tommy Conway. He's not going to give up the chase, so Nine gets there ahead of him, though, and gets the ball away down the left-hand side. And eventually kept in on that far side by Equa. On to Clark, inside to Neil, back oh. to Clark. Clark's got to work to keep this oh, in, he doesn't. Out. It's just it's rolled out. out. Throw to Bristol City, 85th minute. I can't see... I can't see what that attendance is, but I think Did it's I'm probably, 40? Did probably it laughable. Um, as someone pointed out earlier, it's not. they shouldn't be giving that out as attendance, they should be giving that out as tickets sold. It's not the actual attendance, because it's surely way below 40,000 again. You know, 40,298 is the official. But I think if we're, we're, we're talking realistically, probably 30,000. Nil-nil, and the ball in the air. It's going to go out again for a throw to Sunderland. Just inside their half on the left. At least those in the east stand have had the benefit of the, the sunshine this afternoon. They have indeed. It's been lovely over there, that side, anyway. Yep. Not so nice on the west. Not so nice in the west. But it's not been a bad game. It's, it's, I think first half was arguably better. Much improvement. A lot of improvement. But just needed to be a bit more clinical in front of goal. Still time, we're in the 87th minute. Elise has got a throw for Sunderland on the far side. Dax header in the second half, crashing off the underside of the crossbar. Viner beats Clark. Ball inside and chasing back is Hayden Roberts, gets it back to Max O'Leary, who's been outstanding for Bristol City in goal this afternoon, predominantly in the first half. Swings his foot through it, puts the ball out for a throw to Sunderland. Again, just inside the Sunderland half on the left. Elise trying to find uh, Job. Gems comes back to Neil, comes off the back of Equa, which takes it into the path of Matty James, who's appealing for handball, I think. And he wins the free kick. James takes it quickly for Bristol City to Hayden Roberts. Just left of the centre circle, leaves it for Williams, back to Hayden Roberts in front of him, Patrick Roberts, but he gets it out to Pring. Pring now bringing this up for Bristol City, laying it off his Conway to... Williams, Williams swinging the ball over to the right side of the Sunderland penalty area. It runs out by the corner. Yeah, and, you know, Sunderland will be looking at, well, kicking themselves, really, because you've got to say this is a game they should have won. Yes. Quite easy. Yeah, I think they'll feel the chances they created, they probably should have taken at least one of them. It's nil-nil, though. Earlier today, Manchester City beat Crystal Palace 4-2 in the Premier League. Aston Villa and Brentford is th three all at the moment with three minutes to play. Everton are beating Burnley. Newcastle one off at Fulham. Luton and Bournemouth has won all. West Ham winning 2-1 at Wolves. And uh, in the Championship earlier today, Norwich beat Ipswich. Blackburn and Southampton, it's 0-0. Hull are winning 3-1 at uh, Cardiff. Leeds are losing 2-1 at Coventry. Leeds are next up for Sunderland at Ellen Road, where they're unbeaten this season. Huddersfield and Millwall's goalless. Leicester and Birmingham is one apiece at the moment. So Ipswich will be looking at their result against Norwich. And actually, as things stand, it may not have come out too badly as Equa has just reacted to a challenge by Williams. Um, Middlesbrough beat, uh, leading at Swansea 2-0. Queen's Park Rangers trailing at home to Sheffield Wednesday 1-0. Stoke and West Brom 2-all. Watford and Preston 0-0. 
in uh, League One, Northampton beating Carlisle 1 0. And uh, in League Two, Notts County leading Harrogate 2 0. Williams is on the pitch at the moment, sat down, referee ushering everybody away. Not missing anything really of no. any note here. We're in the last minute of the game. The fourth official, Martin Coy. Uh, and there's more pushing down here on the Eck was the one that's uh, at the, the heart of this. Patrick Roberts just holding Pierre Equa back. And um, the referee now calling Equa to him. Hume's waiting to take a throw here on the halfway <laughs> line on the right. Um, the referee has called Matty James to him with Pierre Equa. And is telling them both squarely to cut it out, whatever it was he was annoyed with. And we will have how long? I can't see there'll be much added on at the end of the half. Two minutes, maybe? I would say, to say four Two minutes. or three, and there's not been many stoppages. No. Um, we have played the 90 minutes. Martin Coy is going to lift the ball up now to show four minutes. You're right. Here's Cornick. Lays the ball off. Can someone find a goal in these... Four minutes, Cornick down the right, McCrory, he's trying to come round Neil, crosses, it's in Ooh, the box, the cross, it's fallen to it. Conway, teeing it up for Williams, and it's blocked by Hume, comes well, back well, down, well, blocked well, again, well, don't you. and Sunderland somehow well, get well, it away, Hume's hurt one. his lower back. Two Excellent blocks defended. by Hume, Excellent defending. and Conway has to pick himself off the floor. So it's still nil-nil, throw to Bristol City on the left-hand side, played nearly a minute of the four Pring as a throw drops to Conway back to Pring and in the end Hume gets in front of him holds Pring off who puts the ball out as Hume played it down the line throw to Sunderland three minutes left Hume to O'Neill a block by Conway who threw himself at it behind for a goal kick Well, Sunderland then, big challenge on Tuesday night. More so, I suspect, if Coventry do beat Leeds, because there'll be the backlash from that as far as Leeds are concerned. But uh, so tight at the top of the table, Ipswich, Leicester and Leeds, and uh, all seemingly dropping points this afternoon as we reached the conclusion of this afternoon's games following the lunchtime game which Norwich won 1-0 against Ipswich throw for Bristol City with two minutes left inside their half down the right it goes and Elise heads it on again drops here for Williams trying to nod it forward Ballard clears it back up into the Bristol City half headed away by Viner put out by Neil for another Bristol City throw with 10 yards back inside the Bristol City half on the right hand side. Tanner is going to take it again. Sunderland by far and away had the best chances yes. this afternoon. But just haven't you know, had the, uh, the And again, it depends them. on how we want to dress it up, doesn't it? You're you going to say, are we unlucky or, you know, should we have took them opportunities when they were there? Yeah. I, again, like you just mentioned, it sh should be ruthless. Yeah, they've been pretty much, I mean, right in the six-yard box. So Leary's pulled off one or two good saves. They've had one cleared off the line as well. And Dax header off the underside of the bar. They're the ones that you look at and say, right, you should have been more clinical. Yeah. Patrick Roberts heads it on. Back again from Hayden Roberts. And Elise's battling with Conway. Neil's there as well. McCrory down in the corner. Elise's gone with him. McCrory trying to get the ball in the box. It's cleared by Ballard. Hooked away. We're in the last minute. It's a foul, though, on uh, Tanner. Right side of midfield, halfway inside the Sunderland half. Conway's down just outside the penalty area. Got so to defend this. they've got to defend a set piece in the last minute. Here, Sunderland, nil-nil. Joe Williams is going to take the free kick. O'Leary's staying back, you'd have thought maybe the opportunity to try and win it 
they might have thrown the goalkeeper up but um, he stands central in the middle at Sentinel in the middle of the Bristol City half the referee runs up into the the D Joe Williams taken over these set piece juicy duties from Scott Twine who's been substituted and Williams then with his right it's uh, headed away by That's Job it. and that will be it the goal is draw as you say it's, it's, it's how do you want to dress this up you can you can look at the positives and suggest that it's put Monday behind them they've kept a clean sheet but they did have enough opportunities to win the game yeah and <laughs> we'll go back to that old saying striker out yeah, and out forward. striker you know we, 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 we did have some good opportunities um, goalkeeper yes O'Leary made some good saves but you look at him and you're thinking good height comfortable yeah it is I but yeah much improved performance so nil nil here still playing at Craven Cottage where Newcastle have taken a late lead still some time to go there um, we'll hear later hopefully from Mike Dodds who can hear from him obviously on Total Sport on Monday evening uh, ahead of Tuesday night's game at Ellen Road we'll have that live on BBC Ready Newcastle 8 o'clock kickoff Leeds United against Sunderland uh, but this afternoon here at the Stadium of Light it's finished goalless Sunderland nil Bristol City nil so we'll head south and join Matthew See Rachel you later. And Anderson at Craven Cottage for the closing stages of Newcastle's game at yeah thank God for that corner kick uh, there's players ready to come on and uh, Paul Dummett and Matt Ritchie double Newcastle change after 94 minutes 1-0 up Sunderland's finished nil-nil with uh, Bristol City at the Stadium of Light Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, you're welcome Stephen Lane um, thanks Swift anytime mate I've got some socials if you want to hear that See you later. I've got some socials if you want. Welcome ALS, uh, you welcome Paul Helen Heron, welcome Rusty. Social media is saying all for the striker shows the need for the striker once again, but a better performance. Hmm. I've said it before and I'll say it again, proper striker. Um, that was hard to watch. Absolute crap again. See you later. Yeah, yeah, uh, Mike Johnson says, all for the striker. Iris says, shows the need for a striker once again, but much better performance. Paul says, first half decent, second was turgid. Um, Dan says, I've said it before and I'll say it again, no proper striker has done us over again. Um, that was hard watch, says Billy. Wendy says, one point's better than none, so a bit optimistic there from Wendy. Absolute crap again, says from Dave. Um, another shout watch from Adam, rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. I don't think it was rubbish, was it? Uh, you welcome, Rusty. Um, Paul, ALS, you welcome John Felton, you welcome David, mate. At least we didn't. I guess, God, we need a striker. Thanks again. Oh, we did. We, we didn't. We didn't look any any risk whatsoever of, of letting the goal in. Obviously, I don't think it was a threat at all, was there? Apart from maybe it clean off the line from. Oh, Luke was just beaten Bournemouth two one. That's a huge result for them. Everton's won though, I think. Oh, Brighton's on Sky. Oh, Arsenal's on Sky again. Oh, I was on bloody Sky. I hate watching Arsenal. Oh, dear me. Colin Curtis, thanks, mate. You're welcome.
Um, apart from the Leicester City result, I thought that I think they'd be quite sort of pleased. It could be a lot worse for them. But uh, Leeds. Anywhere between the top three, uh, because I think Leicester and Ipswich are a bit sort of. I think they're losing, getting the bottle again, they're losing a bit of the bottle at the end of the season. They're getting squeaky bum time for them, and I think the the, the pressure's shown a bit on them. You would think more for Le for Ipswich than you would for um, Leeds, because Leeds have been there in the Premier League for recently, and you think they'd have, they'd be able to handle it more. Ipswich, I think, deserve to gallop because automatically they, they've practically been there from, from the off, haven't they? Let's face it. I totally shaped that second half, even with our better players back, we have nothing going forward. Your rig, your rig was the best outlet and he took him off. Drastic changes are needed and a better experience in. Well that's the end of the stream, um, don't forget I'll be doing some more videos, we'll be doing a live stream for a bit of a watch along um, chat all about Sunday FC, any questions you want just fight them this way and we're doing another live stream on Tuesday.